Thank you. All right. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm Susan Cole uh, and my co chair, Francis Curtis. We both welcome you to the meeting tonight uh, of the licensing uh, committee of community board one. Uh, so before we start, I'd like to make a, a couple of announcements. Um, just so you know, um, we have a very full agenda, and so uh, we're going to try to get through this as, as efficiently as we can. We have received a number of complaints from renew uh, a number of renewals um, on our form tonight, and uh, I will go through them when I go through each com uh, committee, but basically uh, each um, uh, area. area of the financial district of the committee. Uh, but we are not going, the procedure is when we have complaints, we are not going to renew the licenses. We are going to send a letter and send a letter to the SLA that we postponed your, the renewals until the, the applicant for a renewal comes in the following month because um, uh, these are egregious and this is uh, a problem for the community. And so we want to be alert to that. So that's letting everybody uh, know that. And with that, we are going to um, start with uh, 251 One. uh, uh, Fulton, Fulton Street, Street, which Street. is the Performing Arts Center for everybody. Oh, now. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> a pleasure to see you. <clears throat> Um, you're muted. You can't hear you. I was saying how wonderful it is to see you, Susan. <laughs> sure. I uh, thank you. <laughs> no, really, really, I swear. Um, anyway, uh, okay, I'd like to, we're going to go through this, but I, I, uh, just so you know, this is for the Performing Arts Center. Arts Center, right. Um, that mm -hmm. is uh, the Perlman Center, the Performing Arts Center. Uh, oh, a number Max, of that's people. Max's case. Pardon me? Max. He just yeah. put a message out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I want you all to know there are a couple of things. It's still in construction, and um, uh, we had a tour. Um, I have really two questions to start out with uh, for the applicant. Um, uh, we can go through the, the pages, Onej. Uh, there are two things that I want to know um, uh, as we go. I need to, uh, there it is. It's the second floor uh, restaurant, bar, and terrace, and the fourth floor performing arts and events space that that's really where the uh, the restaurants and the theater uh, the are going to be. Now there are places open to the public, Max. So don't answer me yet. Let me ask them and I want to have clarity on the outdoor space where there is a bar. And I think that's the second floor. And I want to know, is there any public space? You say there's public space, they say on my tour, there's public space on the ground floor. Um, but I, you know, I, I, we didn't really get a whole perspective of that, but the, the second floor venue is a restaurant. So I want to know if it's a public space that the community can go out, how are they gonna get out there going through the restaurant? So that's one question, okay? The second is, um, I want to know why you're coming so early. Because you're clearly not going to open, Max, till September, if then. So I hate when you come so early because then things happen and I don't know about them. We don't know about them, the committee. So there you are. Um, um, sure. Those are my questions. Okay. Well, a, I want to also say to everybody, it is a fabulous space. It's really very exciting. And uh, for those of you who haven't had a tour, uh, it's, and if they do another, it is really quite extraordinary. So everybody should know that. Okay, Max, go to it. Okay, thank you, Susan. I will answer those questions. Just first a bit of housekeeping. I wanna make sure the other members of my team are present. Is this the kind of meeting where they need to be promoted to, to panelists in order to speak? 
Uh, yes. So Nick. I just I just uh, moved Thomas over, and I see someone. Izzy, is that going to be Isabella? James Connors, we need. So anyone who from my team who can hear me, if you could just use the raise your hand function at the bottom of the screen there to show Onedge that you want to be promoted. Um, and I'll begin talking in the meantime. Um, so thank you again, Susan. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Community Board One, it's so nice to see you all again. I'm Max Bookman. I'm an attorney. Uh, my law firm is Pizetsky and Bookman. Sitting behind me is Lisa Glusman. She's a third year law student at Benjamin Cardozo School of Law, and she will be watching tonight. Uh, as I mentioned, also with me will and hopefully being promoted momentarily is James Connors. He is the director of operations for the World Trade Center Performing Arts Center. There he is. Uh, Thomas Yagoda, he's with the Marcus Samuelson group, which will be the restaurant group that's going to be operating the restaurant. And there's some other important members of, on, of our team who are on this call as well, who uh, you, we, you may be hearing from tonight. Um, so, Susan, let me answer your questions and then let me just give you the overview that I wanted to give. So why so early? It's because the SLA is taking so long. Uh, five years ago, it took about two months for the state liquor authority to approve an attorney certified liquor license application. These days it's taking closer to eight months for the state liquor authority to approve any sort of license application. And the processing times are only getting worse. The liquor authority attributes that to a number of issues and they have a, a 10 point plan that they promise will help speed things up, but we haven't seen any evidence of mm -hmm. it. So as a result, applicants have no choice but to come to community boards earlier and earlier, because we've got to get to filing. September 2023 is right around the corner from for liquor license uh, purposes. So <laughs> that's why we're here. On the other hand, though, we're, it's not premature. Everything that you need to know, we have in place. This project has been in the works in some form or another for almost two decades. And so you know, we're ready to proceed and we have all the information that we think will be helpful for you. This project is definitely in place. Um, in terms of the outdoor space, it's an open to the public restaurant on the second floor. So m anyone can eat at the restaurant connected to the restaurant is uh, an outdoor space. That's part of the building's design and it's for restaurant purposes. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, you can get a seat at the restaurant and you can sit outside uh, that that's, that's the, it, 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 but it's part of the restaurant. So uh, that's the answer to that question. So, let me just give you the committee a little bit of, uh, of an overview. Um, folks on the, who live in this neighborhood know better than me how long uh, the, 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 the World Trade Center mm -hmm. site has been in redevelopment. The, the Performing Arts Center has, was, is one of the last pieces of the original 2004 plan to rebuild the World Trade Center site after 9-11. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea was to have a world-class performing arts center in Lower Manhattan. The applicant, who Mr. Connors is with, <laughs> is the not-for-profit entity, World Trade Center Performing Arts Center Incorporated, that was created just for the purpose of developing and opening and operating the Performing Arts Center. So they will be on the liquor license. And on the liquor license with them as well is going to be the Marcus Samuelson Group. Uh, Mark, chef Marcus Samuelson, world-renowned chef from Red Rooster fame and many more restaurants. Uh, they're really excited to have him and his team be running the restaurant and handling food and beverage operations in the Performing Arts Center. Um, two floors to the liquor license. There's the second floor, which you come up into. That's, uh, uh, that's going to be the restaurant itself, including the outdoor space connected to the restaurant. Then you go up a flight of stairs to the fourth floor, and that's where the three uh, theaters <laughs> are. The liquor license is going to cover all of those floors. Um, we know that outdoor space requires special attention. Uh, so we had Al Firestein, who's here tonight to answer any questions, um, do a sound study as it relates to just the outdoor space. We are agreeing to following his recommendations. We're mm -hmm. offering to close the outdoor space at 11 p.m. Um, in terms of community outreach, there was a significant amount. Not only does the, you know, has the Performing Arts Center itself in all of its various phases of construction and development uh, closely incorporated 
community feedback. Uh, Katie Schwab from Cozen O'Connor is here to, uh, you know, they've, they've handled the, um, the community outreach and community engagement from the beginning. But there's mm -hmm. also been tours, as Susan mentioned, specific to uh, the liquor license. Um, so I'm going to stop there. Um, we're excited to be here and we're happy to answer any questions that members of the committee may have. So I, I do I do have, and then I'm gonna call on my committee and then anybody who's from the public. Mm -hmm. I have two things, mm -hmm. security, which I forgot to ask you, Max, and mm -hmm. the traffic pattern. What, where is drop off? I mean, you know, it's mm -hmm. really located very easily for uh, public transportation. That's one of the joys of it. Um, but how, what's the traffic pattern going to be and who's responsible for that? And how are you going to secure people coming and going and all of that? Sure. That's two things. And then, um, uh, so if I understand correctly, you are closed on Sundays. So that's what I read, but I want to make sure, cause there's no 2 AM on Sundays. Yeah. That's right. We have all hours of up except for 2 a.m. on Sundays. James, that's right, right? Close Sundays. You're okay. muted, but I think I heard you say yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> all right. Thank you. So, um, so Susan, I'm going to mm -hmm. answer your question about why is why is security on the application. I'm going to give you a yes. uh, a short answer mm -hmm. about traffic, and then uh, Jim, if there's anything you want to, you know, briefly supplement in my answer about traffic, uh, I invite you to do so. So. Um, on security, a typic your typical restaurant license application, of course, does not require security. We have put security as part of the liquor license application, not really because of the restaurant, but because of the Performing Arts Center. This is in yeah. the, law the broader 9-11 uh, site. Security is, of course, of paramount importance. Yeah. And so we will have <laughs> security that's there to secure the building, to secure guests, um, not only from a, a core per security perspective, but also uh, to make sure that guests are coming and going appropriately, people are coming and leaving in a safe manner, answering questions about where to get the train, et cetera. Um, on the point of, of traffic, you're right, Susan, and you know, transit has been core to uh, the redevelopment of the uh, World Trade Center site from the beginning. We're right uh, directly across the plaza from a significant amount of, 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 of transit that was recently built. Um, the expectation is not that there there will be a significant amount of vehicle traffic, but of course we understand that there will be vehicles that come and do their drop offs and pickups. The World Trade Center site as a whole was was designed with the understanding that it would be a tourist destination and tourists frequently take cabs. And so the overall redesign of the site anticipates that there will be uh, 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 you know four higher vehicles mm -hmm. picking up and dropping off. We're part of that broader plan. Uh, Jim, anything else you want to add on, on, on vehicles? Well, a couple of things. One, that um, we've been in touch with the MTA regarding assessor ride. So we will have an assessor ride uh, stop right in front of the, of the Performing Arts Center. Also, um, as Max was saying, the World Trade Center campus allows for pre-registered vehicles uh, and drivers to have access to drop off and to pick up in front of the Performing Arts Center um, it does require pre-registration into the World Trade Center uh, vehicle registration system. There's already thousands of of um, <clears throat> of car services that are already registered for that. Um, in addition, we have talked to DOT, <laughs> and I know they're thinking about where routine drop-off and pickup would be, you know, outside or at the perimeter of the World Trade Center site. But again, as Max mentioned, and even as, as the chair mentioned, you know, we couldn't be happier to be in probably the, the best location of any cultural institution in the city in terms of the density of mass transit. So uh, my only question is that once you have a that question, my only uh, uh, request at this moment is that when you have it down with DOT and you have where the drop offs are going to be, uh, uh, Jim and Max, that you get us that information. Of course. Okay. And, and to be clear, all that information mm -hmm. would live on our website, which would be where we think the majority of our guests would go to to get information about programming, to secure you know, tickets to performances. We'll also have a call center where we'll also make sure our team is ready 
to disseminate that information, but we'll make sure we get you the specifics from DOT. Thank you. Uh, Susan, I just want to make a correction to what I just I said. I think we, we put the information in a confusing format in our package. We are going to be open on, on, on Sundays. The restaurant will be open on Sundays. Uh, we get that 2 a.m. may not be the closing time, and so we we could we could work with you on that. But um, uh, hmm. we, we we do this. We do want this to be a seven day a week liquor license, and the, the restaurant will be open on Sundays. Uh, 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 because you're going to have performances, but on Sunday, my response, Mac, would Max would be that it uh, close uh, that you close <laughs> since you're closing the terrace the way I understood it from you at to 11 p.m. that you uh, uh, at least close the restaurant at, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll see if the committee agrees mm -hmm. uh, at uh, at midnight, not 2 a.m. I, yeah. I was thinking you might say midnight. I'll, while while the rest of the committee speaks, I'll ask my team, but, um, I, you know, <laughs> you're, that's a reasonable request. Okay, Karen, go for it. Thank you. Um, I know. This is a large venue. In fact, it's a very, very large okay, venue. Well, yeah. And I, I have some questions about the second floor terrace because I think that's possibly the only locus that might present a disturbance. Um, I noticed there that they've checked off DJs, live music, musical entertainment, dancing, and so on. Um, is that interior? Is that on the terrace? If it's interior, um, will you have a way of blocking off the sound so it doesn't leak out? So, yes to almost everything you said, Karen. Um, the First of all, why do we have live music and, and DJs, et cetera? It's a performing arts center. Um, we need to have that flexibility to be able to have it. You know, Everybody understands. There's a lot of expectations, a lot of external expectations about what type of uh, operation we're going to run here. None of those expectations include, you know, nightclub. Everybody understands that this is going to be a performing arts center, but, you know, we needed to check those things off in connection to have those uh, functions in, uh, uh, available in connection with the, the artistic performances that are put on. Uh, no, of course, uh, DJ live music, it uh, will not be outside on the terrace. Um, when we had Mr. Firestein do his report, we asked him to assume that we would have uh, light recorded background music on the terrace. Um, in his report, he does um, advise us that if we follow his recommendations regarding um, uh, the type of sound system um, on the outdoor terrace, which, you know, in layman's terms is basically a small sound system, um, that it would not pre present uh, noise issues for anyone who lives nearby. Of course, not a lot of people do live nearby with the exception of the one commercial building that's um, on, uh, I have the address right here, on um, uh, 140 West Street. Um, the residents of that building uh, don't start until the 11th floor of that building, which is a, about 260 feet away from the terrace. So our goal is to follow his recommendations and if you were to so indulge us, we would we would like to have uh, light background music on the terrace. Okay. Okay. Um, you didn't answer one last thing, which is if you're having something much noisier inside, oh, yeah. do you have the equipment or or the wherewithal to block it from leaking out? Pardon. So the, the short answer to that is yes. The slightly yes. longer answer is that. Um, because this is a performing arts center where there's going to be theatrical performances, they have to have a state of the art sound um, mm -hmm. uh, attenuating system, system anyway, right. because people inside can't hear what's going on outside in, in the right. city. Uh, if you hear cars honking and people talking, or for that matter, you know, conversations on the terrace and you're watching a show that you paid uh, for a ticket for, you're not going to be happy. And so, They've invested a significant amount of money, as any world-class performing arts center would, into keeping the sound in, which has the, also the effect of keeping the sound out. Um, we, of course, would agree to all of your usual stipulations that if there are um, you know, DJs or live music being played in the performing arts center, that we would not have doors to the outdoor space um, you know, propped open. You know, we don't actually think it's necessary, but as an added, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, belt and suspenders, feel comfortable. Yeah, accommodation. Thank you, Susan. That you know, we would be happy to. 
right. Karen, is that okay? Can I call on Francis? Please. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, just to kind of follow up on um, Karen's question about the noise, I, I would like to propose that we put it in this uh, in the resolution something to the effect that uh, all of the music uh, accommodations exclude the restaurants. Like the DJs and all, all that stuff that's checked is, you know, that you're concerned with. Let me check with my team, but I don't think we have any issue with, with saying, with stipulating that there won't be a DJ or live music within the restaurant. I think that that was never really the plan, but let me double check that. Wow. Yeah, but since what I since you had all of them checked and it it didn't and you have all of these different and you're you're asking for a liquor license for the restaurant, one would think that they that this is related to the restaurant. So I'm suggesting mm -hmm. that we put something in the resolution that you know takes care of that. Yeah, okay. I, I I hear that, Francis. I mean, just right. you know, the reason why we for whatever it's worth, the reason why, you know we classified this as a restaurant liquor license is because even though it encompasses the theater as well, legally, since there's a restaurant within the premises that's being licensed, the, the, the SLA would call that a restaurant liquor license. But of course, um, you know, the, the, the liquor license would cover more than just a restaurant. It would cover the theater spaces as well. Um, I've just got uh, an okay from my team. Uh, no DJ in the restaurant is, is fine. That's not an issue. Um, we'd like to see if there's, uh, if we could be accommodated to have occasional live music in the restaurant only because. Oh, sure. Um, background music. That's fine. Well, know? background live music. I mean, your definition, yeah. all, of, of course, yeah. always of, 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 you know, background music is that if it can't be heard, you know, outside it's background <laughs> music, we would of course, well, you know, uh, right. agree with that. But, uh, before I call on, um, so, uh, Francis, what? go on. I'm sorry. Go. Um. There, there is a residential building around there on Barclay Street. Oh. That old, uh, uh, um, that old uh, telephone building. Part of that is very exclusive condominiums. So there are residents. Uh, forget the the number. The Barclay and West Street. That old uh, uh, AT uh, and T or. Uh, the the old telephone building there that's right yeah. there, yeah, is it has been converted into super luxury uh, 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 residences. Yeah, so there are residences. You know, Francis, in, I, I I used to be able to say a lot, you know, in all sorts of places that you know no one really lives near here. It's hard to say that in Lower <laughs> Manhattan anymore. You oh know, yeah, you can't, you can't you know you know turn over a stone without you know finding. Uh, you know, luxury apartment. So it's understood. I think the only point I was trying to make is that, you know, since this isn't in, this is in the World Trade Center campus, it's not like your, your usual, you know, FIDI application where we are like, you know, we share a wall with, with a residential building directly oh, yeah. next door. Yeah. No one's breathing down our neck. The closest building that's residential, as I said, is the one at 140 West Street. But your point is taken. But I, I think the point being, so let's be very clear before I call on Joel. That oh, that is sorry. That is the same building. The the bar. Oh, is this the one hundred the Barclay building that that Francis yeah. you were just saying? That is yeah. the same address as one forty West Street. So that's the building we're talking about being closest mm -hmm. to. Okay. Right. Okay. But 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 Max, I want to be very clear. The way I heard you, so we're all clear for the resolution, is that terrace will be closed at eleven p.m. Am I correct? Yes, Susan. And so there will be, and I guess it's the doors that slide open should be closed as well. Understood. We are not going to have utilization of the terrace after 11 p.m. So okay. no, no need for the doors to be open after 11 either. Okay. All right. Let me call on Joel. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Can, I, can I have one other question before you get of to Joel? You, of course you Of course you may. In turn, well, since this is a liquor license, uh, will you be, will there be bars inside the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the performance center? Because you know how at intermission you can go and get a drink 
you know, so our people, uh, is, is the liquor license is going to extend into the actual performance setting, performance setting there. Uh, yes, Susan, excuse me. Yes, Francis. Um, we will have, um, your traditional theater type bars on uh -huh. the third floor. Um, we, we have two of them, excuse me, on the fourth floor, pardon me, that's where the, that's where the three theaters are. Um, you, we, we have two of them on our floor plans, and so those are the bars where, during intermission, you can get a drink. Um, can, uh, okay, so um, I don't know if we need to have some parameters on in terms of the, the serving so that people don't get loaded before they come out? Well, uh, 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 before they come out outside or before right. they go into the, the After the performance is over, you know, some people might want to go to the, to the bar there and hang out and drink before they leave. Well, let me talk about that for a minute. I mean, obviously, we're, on, and we're under an obligation not to serve visibly intoxicated people. The goal is not to get people loaded and then leave. But one important aspect of this theater operation, um, which is the trend with more modern performing arts centers, is unlike your typical Broadway theater experience where the show is over, there's nothing else to do. You have to leave. You know, within right. 10 minutes, you are being kicked out right. the door. The goal right. is to give folks something else to do before they leave and that's bring them to the restaurant. So there's going to be, you know, th that's why the restaurant does have the hours of operation that we've requested. We're going to encourage yeah, people to, to eat at the restaurant. We're going to encourage people to stay in the lobby where there may be, a, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, something else that's entertaining going on. We think that actually helps from a community board perspective sure. because instead of having a million people just pour out door. onto the street all at the same time, the way you have in Times Square, it, it won't be that way. Some people obviously will go home as soon as the show is over. Some might stay and go to the restaurant and just, okay. you know, for a few minutes and some might stay for two hours. So it'll be a, a distribution of people leaving. I'm gonna cut So you. the question is the, the bars at, in the theater should be closed after the performance is ended. The bars in the theater should be closed and, you know, people can go to the restaurant. I think that's the plan, Jim. Okay. Isn't that right? <clears throat> Yeah, that's for when we're having performances on the fourth floor. The idea is to have the uh, the theater bar on the fourth floor to to serve yes, folks at, at intermission, so they don't have to go downstairs to get a refreshment and then go back upstairs. So yeah, that is the plan. But when they leave to go home, it'll be closed. That's it'll correct. only be open during. When the theater closes, it'll be closed, and they'll go to the second. When the floor. perform no, when the performance is over. Yeah, yeah, when the performance right. is over, and then they'll go to the second floor. They'll have access there. Am I correct? Right. Okay. That's absolutely correct. All right, Joe, go to it, and then I want to close this, if I may. Okay. Um, just back to the traffic uh, question, and um. I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of black tie VIP events there, which is phenomenal. I think that's great. Um, I know, you know, back in in the early days, we used to have cars lining up all over Wall Street, and we still do with Cipriani having an event. Um, do you see black cars lining up there instead of circling or just parking, um, waiting for the event to, uh, you know, to be over? Is you gonna have very uh, important people at this show. They're going to want to just get into their black car as soon as the show is over and leave. Do you see any problems at all with black cars, parking, lining up, circling the blocks, waiting for the show to be over because you have an amazing event happening that night? I'll, I'll let Jim uh, address that point if you want, if you'd like, Jim. Sure. So, Joel, you know, first of all, we aspire to have performances that attract all walks of life in New York City. That is our absolute goal is to be inclusive in, in the types of programming we have. There certainly could be some events where there are, uh, you know, some black cars that come. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's many, many car services, like thousands of cars that have been registered in the World Trade Center vehicle access um, uh, system. So they, rather than circling around or parking on neighborhood streets, they'd be able to come in and 
and pull in front of the Performing Arts Center or a little farther down in front of uh, Warren World Trade Center, which is right next door to us for pickup. Um, so I, I don't feel like that's going to be a, a, a big problem for us. Okay. I uh, just want to make sure that we not going back to the uh, 1990s where all these uh, financial companies had these black cars waiting in the street um, all night long, you know, for for pickups. But thank you for answering the question. Of course. Uh, uh, I would like to, uh, it, to call the question. And... Oh, wait, wait, I got one more question. Oh, Did Francis. You, uh, just in terms of numbers, how many, how many does the, uh, the restaurant, how many, what's the seating capacity? For the restaurant and what's the seating capacity for the theater it's right there but the, the restaurant right. has 160 seats with 40 tables there's a large okay. venue yes yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's big you know and it's also you know it's been coming for 20 years um okay. the uh the theater space the number the seating will, will vary depending on on the performance i don't have the total theater capacity at the tip of my mind uh jim you you, you know that yeah so we have uh, three theaters the smallest one holds about 80 people. The largest one holds about 350, but a most common configuration of theaters because they're inter interconnectable <clears throat> is about 400. That'd be like our sweet spot, 400 or 450. Um, so not a really large facility, nothing like Broadway. They're very intimate spaces. Um, so uh, the maximum we could have would be about 800 or so uh, seated, 800, 850, but we consider that to be okay. really the exception. The, the the typical would be more in that four four fifty range. Okay. All right. So I've called the question. Can I have a second? Second. Second. All right. I'm going to say, are there any nays? Any abstentions? Any refusals? You got it. Good luck to you. Thank you, everyone. Max, give us yeah, a heads you. up when you're going to uh, officially open. We absolutely will. We'll be welcoming you for another tour and I will see. Oh, please. I missed the last one. And I'll be seeing everybody later in your agenda for the 162 Water Street applications. Okay. See you then. Uh, Bye. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Max. Okay. All right, thank you. Let's go to the next one. Where's that? Gein schemes. <laughs> Okay, this is 56 Beaver Street. Okay. So I'd like to preface this. This is the Delmonico's. And so uh, who is here from Delmonico's? Anyone? Hmm. Here, I just moved them over. Okay, will you tell me who you are? Please tell us, not me, all of us. Oh, here I am. Uh, uh, this is Martin Miller. I, I'm the attorney for Delmonico's, and uh, uh, one of the owners, Dennis, is also uh, uh, here tonight. So like let me just preface this, Martin, by a couple of things. You did not fill out the questionnaire in, in its entirety, um, uh, but we decided to have you in, and we are going to give you till Friday to get back to us with the completed questionnaire filled out. I, um, I really I, appreciate that. Thank you. I, I don't know. To be honest, we did fill it out. Somehow it fell off. I, I noticed I printed it out and half of my stuff didn't come. I apologize. It will be there by Friday. It, uh, I, uh, please, because I will take it to the executive committee so I can take it to, we can take it to the full board and I want my committee to see it. But I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and then leave it to the uh, committee to ask a few questions. So, uh, one, um, your capacity um, is what? The the total capacity, uh, as per the uh, CFO, is 546, but we're not going anywhere near that. There's going to be 260 seats, there's going to be 60 tables, and there'll be 30 seats around the bar. That's where we're going. Okay, you have to fill that in. What are your hours? Uh, the hours are going to be um, what are you 11. Asking for? I'm sorry, what? What are you asking for? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Well, we're asking for uh, noon to uh, 1 a.m. on weekdays and noon to 2 a.m. on weekends. So, um, uh, uh, weekdays being uh, 
uh, Monday through Thursday and Friday and Saturday being the weekend. Correct. And Sunday? We, we'll go back to uh, 1 a.m. We're not, I mean, to. Uh, 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 I think it will be, uh, uh, this is residential. So um, uh, I would think we're going to ask you at least for this reopening to be, um, and my committee can correct me, but I would say 11 p.m. Um, uh, if they want 12, uh, you know, that's me uh, for Sunday. Uh, but it is, uh, uh, and it's a problem because it's a real residential area. Not that your your traffic is loud but you have had parties in the past there are those of us who live around there who know and the only other thing i ask is um yes it's located near a lot of uh, subways but you have to have some security and traffic pattern that you should put in your application we have to know what's going to happen there because people it's a, those are narrow streets and people get dropped off and picked up and a variety of things. We didn't plan on any security, but if you, if you want some security with respect to people leaving, coming and going, that's fine. The only thing I, I, I ask is that please on Sunday, if we could have midnight, that would be nice. But we're, we're not looking. I to, don't, I don't, I, 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 I let I'll hear what the rest of the committee says. I, I, I think it's a, I mean, okay. Um, so those are all mine. Is there uh, Joel? You have a question, and who? And Dennis, you must be from the community from. Uh, uh, Delmonico, the community. Yes. yes. From where? Uh, I'm no, he's I'm one of the uh, owners of Delmonico. Oh, okay, I'm I'll, get, I'll let I'll call on you in a minute, but let me call on Joel. Okay. Go on, Joel. Um, hi, I'm so happy you guys are. <laughs> coming back you have no idea um thank you so one question i know you have the main restaurant um which is great but i've actually on the side street there you had another um little another bar opening place. Yeah. right where there was a bar and there were some tables so you can get some hors d'oeuvres you can get some bar food um you actually could get a meal there too uh there was waiter service there so um so are you i'm trying to figure out are you asking for the same hours as the bar on the side street as the restaurant or are you going to operate that differently is that no no, no. at all yeah that, that's all going to be open um just like we did for for over 20 years it'll be the same okay but remember something yeah. mm -hmm. uh when you put that in right next to you uh, uh on uh beaver street Mm -hmm. is a residential building correct well, so they're, uh, they're in a residential building we're, there we're is. Inside. we're yeah we're in we we've been uh we, the, the 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 building across the street and above us you know we never had any issues ever had any issues in the neighborhood um for 22 years that i've been there right uh, we're you know we're all for the community so uh, we're good with the residents. We're fair. We're, there's no noise. It's only background music. So, yeah. Um, there's nothing. Okay. There's nothing that I see. Yeah. Joel, you have another question? No, I, I no. Um, but I, and I personally, I don't have a problem with the twelve o'clock on the Sunday. Okay. But I, I know you've had weddings and parties there, and God bless you. I think it's great. It brings people to the neighborhood. Um, so I think maybe that's where a little bit of the uh, you know, maybe uh, the noise comes in, but it, it's never been terrible. Um, I, I, I've never really had any complaints uh, or heard any complaints about uh, about you guys doing that. But you, the only the only time I think there really was a problem, um, and I know you guys, you know, you have to have revenue, um, and it's very prevalent, especially with Twenty Exchange um, and the different blocks around here with all the filming. And sometimes you guys rent out the establishment for uh, for a film, and sometimes there's overnight mm -hmm. shooting in a film in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So um, I think you need to address that because Susan, that's sometimes um, they're filming overnight. Um, and yes, it might be inside the restaurant, but there might be a scene where um, they're filming where people are coming in and out of the front door. And that could be right, two, well, three, we'll four in the morning. In a, in a resolution, well, Martin, well, Dennis, well, what do you want to say? Well, no, I mean, 
the, the issue becomes they, they take over the whole neighborhood. It's not only us um, that are involved. So it's, you know, it's a scene here, it's a scene there. They, they block off the entire area. So we're doing some holding, um, but I have no control over what they do well, you know, uh, down the blocks. Yeah, my, yeah? Uh, we understand that. But my yeah, suggestion yeah. is that your Sunday, you do not have them film on a Sunday, okay? okay. And yep. I, we will give you till 12, but do not, I mean, try to understand what you've got there. And there are more residents and it's, uh, you of know, and, ju- and make sure you have security and um, uh, give us your traffic pattern. Yes. All right? When are you guys, uh, guys going to open? Well, it, uh, the problem the problem is one of the liquor authority, as uh, as Mr. Yeah. Bookman said earlier. Uh, for all intents and purposes, the you know, say liquor authority, liquor authority has gone out of business. I mean, uh, they're they're calmly telling people it's going to take eight, eight months to get a liquor license. We're we're attempting to get a temporary. We we hope to get one, um, so that might speed it up considerably. But uh, so I I I just want to say one other thing. So you have a capacity of 260 seats. We consider those, if you uh, did it all, those are buyouts. Uh, you know, those are big venues that you have. And we uh, do not, um, and I'll call on you, Francis, in a minute. We do not, uh, I think we would limit you to uh, at least um, uh, two a month, that there would be no more than that. You mean private events? Yeah. Yeah, big, large ones. You no, I understand. An event is, that, is that a problem, Dennis? Dennis? Um, we do. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Um, for for uh, with, with private dining, I mean, I don't know, you know, what 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 business is out there left, but yeah, we're gonna we 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 don't generally do so many people so it's kind of like an in and out all day it's like people coming for lunch coming for yeah, dinner i know turning over seats yeah okay well we're gonna but like you know if you have a cocktail party yeah but, i mean the, the the neighboring the neighboring guests and the, and the residents if it's an event for downtown alliance or whatever you know we'll do for charities and fundraisers we'll have a couple hundred people in the building um yeah well i think it, yeah. I think let's do it this way. Let's see. Let's limit you to two a month for the large venue. And I mean, 200 or plus. That's really 150 or more. And if you can come back in six months, if you think there's um, you're going to be able to do more. But let's give it a shot and see how you do. I don't think that's unreasonable. Uh, Francis, go on. Yeah, that was going to be one of my uh, my. Uh issues that I was going to bring up and the, in terms of how many buyouts and to put some kind of limits on that. Um, the other thing in terms of the filming and stuff, which is there a way, uh, that, you know, um, that you could notify the community to let the, give them a heads up that, uh, they're going to be doing some filming such and such and such and such a time. So there will be some disturbance in the neighborhood for, uh, Two weeks, two days, or whatever. Is that something yeah. that's possible? Yeah, so um, like I said, a lot of the times because of the the location and stuff, we're really not that involved. So they ask us a lot of times just to put the lights on or to have people walk in and out. I'm I'm not in full control of the entire production. Um it's they're usually they come in and they because it's the facade of the building, it's the blocks that they go up and down. So it's not it's not, it's not a, a shoot in the restaurant. It's like most of these are, are shoots of the neighborhood. Um, yes, of course, I can notify the community uh, of, of what's going on. But, you know, sometimes it's, you know, you probably know before, before it even happens. I don't know how, the, I don't know actually how they do it. But yes, I, I would definitely put signs, inform you. those little signs. Yeah, yeah. Just, signage. Just, yeah, they, just they do, uh, they make sure signage. you do that. All right. Okay. Of course. Anybody else? Right. Okay. So. With you getting what we're going to do is this is going to be conditional that you get us all the information by Friday. You got it. And um, stating all the things we have talked about. And so I'm going to ask, I'm going to call the question and ask for a second. I thought, so, um, excuse me, I thought that this would be voted on at uh, executive committee. 
Well, I'm not sure it, it should be. I would like to at least have a tentative, uh, uh, let's call this tentative, Karen. I would like to make sure that everybody agrees to it and um, uh, you'll, you know, we'll all get it by Friday and I'll send it around. And if there's a problem, we'll deal with it. Fair enough? I'd like enough. to remind the committee yeah. um, since the applicant has indicated uh, their seating capacity uh, that is over 75 seats and we will have to they will have to consider the large venue stipulations and Absolutely. submit that as well on yes. Friday, by Friday. Yeah. Okay, Send no back problem. To them. Okay. I second. Right. Thank you. Okay, Joe, thank you. So um, uh, are there any uh, 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 negative? Are there any no's? Any abstentions? Yeah, I'm I gonna think, abstain. I'm I knew that abstain. was going to happen. You think you surprised me? Any <laughs> any recusals? Okay, uh, so we will hopefully have this by Friday. I will still take it to the executive, and it will come before the full board at our full board meeting at the end of the month. All right. Thank you so may, much. May I may I just say, ask one thing? Uh, a little unusual. I, I'm in my son's house and I'm babysitting uh, my two grandchildren with my wife, and she's having a devil of a, of a time up there. I also have Murray fifty or one. My other client is Murray fifty seven, and, and they're on the agenda tonight too. Is it possible to hear them now, or, or do I have to I'm, wait? Martin? I'm sorry. I've got sorry such a big agenda. We just All right, no. I'm sorry. I'll, that's fine. That's I'm I'm sorry. I'd love to be honor it, but I can't. So I, all right, everybody. So we're moving on to the next. All right, one twenty three, Martin. We'll get you back. Okay, give me a moment. I will. Um. So, for everybody, one twenty three, Washington, is asking from hours which they originally had from two a.m. to four. But we have had um, through December uh, uh, 2022 from February, uh, I think it's through December. I don't know whether there are any this February. I can't read it correctly, but there have been nine complaints. So I am personally loath to give you 4 a.m. All right. Uh, uh, I've been there once a little while over here. I, it's a, John, I just moved you over. Oh, wait a minute, Onesh. I'm letting Dar uh, Daron. No, you know, I, I've been there, okay. been there just once a little over a year ago. I, from, from what I can tell, it's a Mediterranean restaurant. I don't see the need to be open at 4 a.m. No restaurant needs to be open at 4 a.m., period. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Daron. I agree. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, also with the complaints and everything else, um, uh, we would not uh, allow you to go to 4 a.m. I don't think anybody has any trouble with that. I don't know who's representing you uh, of the person here. Maggie Dalal and John. And John, Maggie, are you with this item? Yeah, I'm just a community member and I wanted to to make a comment. Is that okay? Sure. Oh, Please. okay. Um, I actually live across the street. I am at, uh, is our, our address is 75 West Street, but we have an entrance at 110 Washington Street. Um, and I can actually see the restaurant outside of um, my building. Um, and I actually wanted to come here and, and offer support um, for them. Um, they're, he's their family run small business. John's the owner. Um, we're actually working with him. Um, I, I work with the 276, a community school, um, and he's, he's helping us run an event. He's been really great and receptive, um, really, really easy to work with. Um, I know that they've been struggling a little bit to get business. Washington streets, you know, we, we have a lot going on on the street. So, um, he had mentioned that they were applying for a liquor license. They have the first floor of the restaurant is actually more of like a bar. In fact, it's not a restaurant, so I, I think that's I'll let him speak about that, but that's probably why he's asking. But I just want to say I was surprised actually to see that there were complaints. I mean, literally, I could like 
I can see the, they, they do have a little bit of an outdoor area. There but, were nine, co there were a complaints. Yeah, so I mean, an issue for us. Yeah, I and would just say to you, you guys, I, I think I've never ever heard noise coming from them. Um, the, the block can be noisy. Like, there's been times at night where I look out and I'm trying to figure out where the noise is coming from. And we Clinton Hall's down the road, and sometimes they have noise, and then there's private terraces that have noise as well. Um, but I've never, I've never had an issue with with them. So just just wanted thank to you. let you guys know that thank that you. I'm a neighbor and support of them. Yeah. So thank you, John. Another question here. I know, I know this 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 space has been a lot of things over the years. Right? It was BLT, something else. And, you know, every few years it's something else. Has this location ever had a 4 a.m.? Maybe that's another thing to look into as well. Because, you know, and I know neighborhoods evolve, of course, we all know that. But if, you know, I guess, you know, it's, I, I'd like to know if it ever had 4 a.m. You know, maybe that would help swing me a little bit. But um, right. that was my, that would be my question. I agree. I'm two. Second floor has 128, and the first floor has 60 uh, 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 seats. Uh, uh, and a bar area, whatever. Uh, 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 and th this is requesting, there's, uh, I happen to agree that no restaurant needs to be open till 4 a.m. Um, right. But uh, uh, I I'm very troubled by all of this. Um, yes. So, uh, John, are you here as the owner? Yes, I am. Uh, why don't you speak? So, I've I've been at the location for three years. I was trying to do the construction for a year and a half. I went there because it was the W Hotel. And the owner, Joe Moynian, he told me that I have to invest over $2 million in order to stay in the space for a high-end restaurant. And after that, the hotels closed down and the W Hotel left. There was a bar on the fifth floor, and now there's no bar on the fifth floor. And now the hotel is run by Lux Urban Hotel. Um, I think that's the new that's the new entity that Joe Monion had given it. The only reason why I'm asking for a 4 a.m. license just on Friday and Saturday is for the hotel guests to come to the bar because they always come at night on a Friday or a Saturday, and they always have a problem that I have to tell them to leave because I only have a 2 a.m. And they always complain about something and they go and complain to the hotel. They go in and say a lot of things. Susan, I understand 100% what you're saying about the complaints. But in reality, if you look at the complaints, you will see that four of them was no evidence of complaint when the police came. Then another another two just it says took action. I don't know what that means, but I remember and you know I have an outdoor right uh, like uh, I built like an outdoor. Yes. There, there was two speakers there, and those speakers they had a volume control, and I think somebody raised the volume and that's why the police came because of the outdoor. So, you know, the, the hotel itself, I'm, I'm in the hotel, I'm in the corner, right across the street, there's another hotel, across the street, there's another one. The only, the only residence is the 120 Greenwich, I believe. But the, the hotel also has a lot of guests that come in and they make a lot of noise. So it's not only myself, I don't know. Um, I never had any problems, but I totally understand what you're saying, you know, that I had I had some complaints, but after two years, I only had eight. I, actually, I have eight complaints, not nine. Well, <laughs> you're very cute. Uh, listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm willing to, uh, 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 and I think the committee would be willing. I, I, I think, uh, let, let's, well, Karen may not, but uh, uh, I don't, you know, um, it, you're asking for Friday and Saturday. That's um, all I'm asking. I'm not uh, asking for anything else. And but just, I, I worry about the speakers outside. Oh, I'm going to take them out. I took them out, Susan. 
to take them out. Well, I don't know that. Okay. Yes, no, no, no. After, you know, I, uh, Captain Smith uh, in the, the first precinct, together with um, community officer Nick Jordan, which is Greek, he came by and he told me to go to the Manhattan South Coraline Night uh, meeting. And I went there to see what's going on. I'm in, in, in great in touch with them to see if there's a problem. And if there's any problem, I'm more than happy to fix the problem. I'm not about having the community all going, going uh, against me. You know, I tried to do my best. I came there, I spent, I know that this doesn't matter how much money I spent, but you know, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm all by myself. I'm not like a big corporation. I'm not a, a big company, you know? I've been in the restaurant business for 45 years. I came from Greece and I work very hard. So the only thing I wanted is trying to make a little bit more money just from just from the res from the hotel, not from the residents. I doubt that the residents are going to come at two o'clock in the morning, but the hotel guests. There was a bar on the fifth floor of the hotel. Yeah, and now there us. isn't. Yeah. The so I, I'm. Go uh, let me stop you, John. Let me ask. Um, uh, uh, Miriama, who I haven't heard from, and then Francis to each ask what they would like to ask. Fran um, Miriama, are you there with your hand up? Maybe not. So Francis, go to it. Oh, I I agree with Darren, and I I just I'm not comfortable with 4 a.m. and yeah. it's a, it's in within a hotel, and the 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 uh, uh, guests there can drink in their room, they can have liquor in their room. So I don't, um, Francis, I don't feel no, comfortable with 4 a.m. There is no, um, there's no F and B. They took out the food and beverage, the union. So there's no room service. This is the problem. Yeah, if they have mini bars or whatever. No, no, they don't even have mini bars, Francis. You know, this hotel, I, I'm so upset that I spent so much money and it was a W hotel and it was a five-star hotel. Now, do you know January, you know what the rates were? $87 a night, $87. W hotel, the res it, it, it was over $350. So Joe Moynihan, he made me invest all this money into this business. And now I have these hotel guests that just want to drink. They don't even know what a bronzino is. They don't even know what Greek food is. So I know that you don't care. <laughs> no, I don't think that's true, John. I think we all struggle with this. Nobody yeah. wants to see you fail. Karen, go on. And then I want to ask Jerome yeah. something else. Okay. I, I've noticed, I think two, oh. You know what? Skip it. It's really my notes on a different building. Okay. I pass. Can I go after Duran? Who is that? Mariama. Oh, go now. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think this may be one of the hotels where they're taking on um, a number of um, the migrants from Texas. No, Mariana. No, Mariana. it's, a, it's holiday a Holiday Inn. Inn. That's it's down the block. Okay. This is not one of the locations. No. no, I don't no. think okay. so. Okay, thank you. Um, Deron? I, I, uh, John, thank you for your uh, words tonight. That, that's very helpful to help us uh, better better contextualize the uh, the situation you have here. And it is uh, quite a situation. Um, how, how does the committee feel about, um, if we want to give them 4 o'clock, maybe 3 o'clock? What do we think? Um, listen, I, I'm a sucker. I, he got me. I'm willing to give him, uh, 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 if he'll, tr let's, let's make a deal till three and then let's see what happens within six months and let him come back. Is that okay. fair enough? Susan, there was yeah, nine, I was it until now. Susan, there was nine complaints. So that's what I was going to say. I think we have to. Meet somewhere in the middle in consideration of the people that complained. Yeah, well, what do you want? Well, uh, talk to me, everybody. Well, there's I'm, nine. I'm willing. There's nine complaints, and you're. you're well, he took out the speakers. 
He well, took he, out the speakers. Well, to um, tell me to tell me that the speakers had a volume control that anybody on the patio could have uh, adjusted the volume up or down. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. The volume control was inside the restaurant. And apparently, I remember that day because I was next door. I saw the police, a police officer come and say to me, hey, you have the speakers. It's so loud. And then I went and I adjusted the volume control. And the next day, I took the speaker out. So this is my compromise, everybody. Um, he took the speakers out. He's got okay. had some community support, as Francis said. He's only asking for two nights. He's been to the precinct. I uh, Duran is giving a compromise. I would go to three. Can you right. live with that, John? I agree. Yeah. Susan, uh, I, I tell you the honest truth. I'm very grateful that you even considered till three, and I'm very grateful that. When the first time that I came to the meeting, you accepted till two o'clock, and I will do my best to have to be a very good, a very good person for the community and not make any problems for anybody, you know, because, you know, I'm there, like we said, I'm there to try to make it the best for everybody. Um, I need to add something. Yeah, I believe this is also a large venue. So he'd have the applicant will have to sign um, the a large, large venue. venue step. Yeah, yeah. I think my attorney sent that to you. No, Karen. No, Susan. Uh, uh, I don't know. Okay. I have to ask Onesh. I don't okay. see. You. I'm looking through, but we will make sure you do. Of course. Oh, and we got to ask about buyouts. Yep. Oh, I never had a buyout yet. Yeah. Well, but you might. We're not going to give business, business, you. Might. Yeah. I we're might now. <laughs> I'm not going to give you any buyouts. How's that? Is oh, that okay? Okay, whatever you say, Susan. <laughs> That's too good to be true. But uh, let's not, uh, uh, or let's say within the the year, we'll give you two buyouts. Fair enough, Francis. Okay. I mean, he's never had them. Unless no problem. He, uh, 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 I don't need to beat up, but we will change the hours. Um, uh, you will have to sign the, the, the large venue, uh, 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 stipulation, which you'll look at. And, um, I'm willing to go with it with Duran's, um, uh, compromise till 3. Thank you so much. I want to vote on it. What? I want to vote on it. Okay. Of course we have to vote on it. So, uh, can I, I'll call the question. Can oh, wait, I have, I'll have one more question on page 9? You say you don't have any deliveries. No, I don't do any. Actually, I don't do any meaning. Do I use delivery service or do I do delivery? I, 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 I just have in my notes that uh, I, was page 9, wherever the question was that was asking about deliveries in terms of when you're going to have your deliveries. My deliveries, when you say, I'm sorry, I don't know, uh, Francis, uh, meaning oh, that what we mean is when do you get your food stuff, your liquor, all of that delivered? Oh, they, they go into the hotel from the hotel, um, from the hotel, uh, the garage over there from the loading dock. Uh -huh. and so your deliveries are through the hotel. Yes. Through the loading dock. Okay. They park in the loading dock okay. and then they, there's Answer an elevator the right there. That answered the question. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to call the question. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Do I have any recusals? Do I have any um, abstentions? Do I have any no's? No. Joel has a no. Uh, I am then thinking that I have everybody else as a yes. Okay, John. Thank you so much. Hope you have, please be aware and try to get no complaints. And if you have them, explore them and figure out what. Of course, like I told you, I'm uh, I'm I'm totally uh, in in conference with Nick or the or the or Danu and uh, Captain Smith at all times. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Good night. Um. All request, right. request for a three minute break. Bathroom sure. break. Could we do that? Yeah, go on. Thank you. Three minutes.
and counting. Our next one, Onesh, is uh, 88 Wall Street, correct? No. No, 96 South. March. 96, what is South. 96 South Street. Oh. Oh, she says. Sorry. If the applicants for 96 South Street can please raise their hand. So that I can move you over. But I want to go back. Oh, yeah, we're going to write a letter for Crown, uh, Crown Chai. Okay, I'm sorry. Here we are. For David O'Reilly. You have David? Ah, yes, Barbara. Thank you. And. Oh, Barbara, hello. Hi, how is everyone? Fine, how about you, kiddo? I'm good. Questions. All right, we're waiting for our three minutes to be up, Barbara, and then we'll move right along. So, I was just there, <laughs> and I'm when trying to figure out which yeah. is the um, uh, uh, grapes and dosas counter. Yeah. So that's on the first floor between the produce section and the salad and sandwiches. Oh, area. I see. So you want a bar there. Well, yeah, the, the counter is already there. It's a 25 foot, 2 inch sort of U shaped counter where they serve crepes and dosas. And, you know, it's only been serviced through the service bars and it's. It's work. It's quite inconvenient. We thought that might work just to have service from service bars. But as you've been there and you see how crowded it can get. It just makes more sense for the those on the other side of the counter to be able to serve a drink. The people eating at the counter. We're not asking for any other change in method of operation, no changes to the physical premise, just the conversion of an existing food counter um, to allow for stand up bar service. Yeah, but aren't you talking about outside? What What's outside? No, no this is inside. This is all inside? There's nothing all inside? Correct. All inside the tin yeah. building. If you see um, the whatever's on the screen right now, if you look middle to the right, you'll see sort of a green highlighted U shape. That's an existing food counter, and that's where we'd like to be able to serve drinks as well. And right now, it's a stand-up counter. Correct. Well, it's a you can sit there and eat a crepe or a dosa, order one. Yeah. It's an active counter. Yeah. I don't have any questions or any trouble. Call it question, Susan. Okay. Second. Somebody second, please. Second. All right. Uh, any recusals? Any abstentions? Any nays? Goodbye, Barbara. Bye. Have a good night. But the mm. oh, I'm it's still here. Okay, Francis. It really. No, is. I wanted to know about the bicycle deliveries because you're gonna have bicycle deliveries. But that that's for the whole tin building. It's no more than them than anybody else. And you say no promoted events, but what about the cooking classes? Aren't they promoted? I think when we originally presented this, we explained that they aren't really promoted events, but they're events within the building that that we would have a special, you know, one off events. But if it's more of a semantic thing at this point, so if, if that's in your mind, a promoted event, I'm, I'm happy to change whatever response we gave before. Mm -hmm. Francis, yeah, I'm good. Okay. I think we answered it in the realm of, you know, traditional promoted events where people are trying to throw flyers out in the street and let people come and party. That's not what happens here. Too expensive, Francis. <laughs> All right. Any others? Uh, so I'm taking everybody else as a yes. Mm -hmm. and go to it, Barbara. All right. Thanks. Okay. So up next is the big one. 
161 Water Street. So what I would like to do with the Water Street, um, some of us already had a tour the other day. Um, uh, the, there are two concerns I have. Um, <clears throat> basically, it's the old AIG building, for those of you who don't know. It's all indoors, um, but there are... are there are going to be a number of restaurants. I'd like to only do the ones that are going to be opened in the next four months uh, through the summer. And I don't think that's all of them that we have here, or is it? I don't know. I'll tell yes. you when you're, when, you, when you're ready. All right, um, go to it, tell me. Okay, um, and for those on my team, uh, make sure you use the raise your hand function at the bottom of your screen so that they know to promote you to a panelist. Um, hello again. Thanks, Susan, again, everybody else. Um, Max Bookman, Pazetsky and Bookman with me is Lisa Glusman, um, as well as a few important members of my team, uh, Simon Khalil, who is the principal of the applicant mm -hmm. here, which we'll get into talking about. Ian, uh, Simon's got 15 plus years of hospitality investment experience, uh, most prominently the Palm Heights in Grand Cayman, which was opened in 2018. It's an amazing hotel. It's gotten excellent reviews. Uh, mm -hmm. He's got a substantial portfolio in London. Ian Nicholson, um, uh, another applicant, experienced food and beverage operator and has been running a lot of the day-to-day -day and is gonna, has been on all of the, the outreach calls and meetings we've done. Uh, Matt Vigiano from Casira, who has also been running the outreach. There's some other important members of our team as well who will speak only if needed. So, Susan, as you said, it's the AIG building built in 1983, occupied by AIG from then until 2020 when they vacated the building. The building has been vacant since. Um, and my client, our team, Simon, Ian, and their team have been hired by uh, the new building owner to help reimagine uh, the use of this building. The idea is that commercial office space does not need to be as dense as it once was. Um, we know this for a lot of reasons. Um, it doesn't need to be packed in with office workers on every single floor as it once was. It could be a little um, less dense. And so the idea uh, for this building is a really uh, novel one and it's an interesting one. They're going to be, the entire building is going to be devoted to fashion, art, culture, and technology. Some people call that fact businesses. Uh, fashion, art, culture, and technology businesses, entrepreneurs, small and mid-sized startups. There's going to be photo studios. There's going to be meeting spaces. There's going to be production rooms. There's going to be traditional office spaces. Um, and there's going to be food and beverage as well. And that's obviously where the liquor licenses come in. Um, all internally managed. What I mean by that is is Simon, Ian, and their team. They are, um, you know, they are on all these liquor licenses. There's no, there's no outside management company. They're running it all. Um, and what we've been doing in our outreach, what Matt and Ian have been doing in the outreach is they've, they've previewed for the community board that there's gonna be many liquor licenses, but we're, what we're only here for tonight is the ones that are, to Susan's point, um, earliest on our agenda for opening. Um, and so, it's four applications before you. There was a fifth one that was withdrawn. So there's four applications before you. And that really cashes out to, to three um, different spaces where there's going to be liquor. So I want right. to cover those briefly. And then can we, with, can we yeah. And then can with we go, permit, each, sorry. Go, go ahead, can we friend. do five and six? Can we do them in groups of, so that people will understand what's on each floor? Let's exactly. Five and six floors. And get through that, then yeah. the 10th, then the 15th, then the rest. You read my they mind. Because they, was... uh, they each have different requests. That's just my, that was just my plan. So we, cool. we, we thought alike. Um, okay. so, so let me tell you what they all are, and then we'll go into each one with everyone's permission. No, so, uh, Francis's um, point as well. Don't tell us what they all are. Just tell us, let's do fifth and sixth first, Matt. Uh, Matt. Okay. Okay. The, so there's three spaces that you're going to be hearing about tonight. The first one, the first liquor license is on the fifth and sixth floors, and that's an art gallery. So as I said, this building, a lot of creative folks, they're going to want to display their own artwork. They're going to want to have shows 
where their artwork is presented. So we're applying for a catering liquor license because this space, not only is it going to function as an art gallery, but it could be booked mm -hmm. for private events from time to time. And so that's a, a quintessential catering establishment license. It's not open every day for lunch. It's not open every evening for dinner. It's not, it's, it, as you can see from the floor plans, it's, it's a pretty open space. It's, it's, a, it, it's meant to be customized for whatever artistic show, uh, art gallery presentation is going on mm -hmm. that evening. Um, there's no outdoor space, and that's true with all, all the spaces you'll hear tonight. No outdoor space. Because it's an old office building, there's no operable windows either. This is a 1980s construction office building, and so there's, you know, there's, there's no operable windows. Um, this space, um, like uh, the other spaces you'll hear tonight, comply with mm -hmm. your, your financial district guidelines for, for hours of operation. We're asking for 12 a.m., um and 1 a.m yeah max i think you can just say that for the whole the whole project because that's one of the things susan and i were really appreciative of we don't have to worry about the hours for this for this whole yeah. thing it, it's you, with your guidelines within, exactly. within the hours and even some earlier exactly uh, fifth and <laughs> sixth floors it's a large venue area how many people look at that yeah large venue. 660 on on the on the fifth uh fifth and sixth floors yes together four, okay. yeah 420 people on the fifth and 240 <laughs> people on the sixth and we you know, we filled out your large venue steps we get that it's a large venue you know we've done a traffic study we've done our diligence we understand that you know that that there's uh, we are taking a building that once was a bustling office building. So, I mean, you know, it was, there was a lot of intense use. It was office workers and we're turning it into somewhat different uses, but we understand those different uses require consideration of traffic. So we've done a traffic study for all of them. Um, none of them that are before you tonight for whatever it's worth are subject to the 500 foot law because they're all up in the air high enough that they're not within 500 feet of three or more licensed premises. But I don't think that really matters because you know, as, as you've heard on this one, it's not, it's at least as, as far as I would submit to you, it's not going to be a particularly controversial application. It's, it's, it's a catering establishment license for an art gallery. The well, only issue, uh, which is going to go through each one. This yeah. one's for the fifth and sixth The, the only issue, uh, uh, we're going to go through this, but the only issue, Max, that those of us who went by and saw it is the entrance on John Street and how you are going to deal with the traffic on John Street and what's going to happen and with security and whatever. The, yeah, that's but, our Susan, biggest okay. issue. Let's go through what's inside the building on Fine, each floor, go to it. And then we can talk about how you get in and out and what the, the, the rest of the Fine. stuff is. So go with the instance. fifth and sixth floors, you had indicated that there would be dancing. Well, that's right. Like any catering establishment, we want to have the op the option if we're going to do a private function to to allow dancing. I mean, it's uh, that that's so that's that true for any catering establishment. The, the cabaret stuff, then. I'm sorry, Francis. I didn't hear you. Then you have to do a cabaret. You have to get a cabaret permit. Not anymore. When thanks to um, Mr. De Blasio, uh, they they eliminated the the cabaret license in the city in 2017. But the underlying Department of Buildings, Fire Safety requirements are all still in place and they have an excellent architect who's been involved with the project and obviously uh, this space will comply with all FDNY, DOB, safety protocols for, for, for there to be dancing. Well, okay, um, Francis, let me just interrupt for a minute. Um, well, we, it, we just heard we're going to have dancing, we're going to permit dancing and so on, and yet, I'm looking at a page where dancing it's it's will not be permitted. The no has been checked off. So right. there is a contradiction. There is there, there is inconsistencies in the application because I noticed yeah. that as well, because yeah. in some places where you check, but my I mean, my okay. least favorite thing, inconsistencies. Let me check with my team while we go through the yeah, rest of this. That's fine. My that's expectation fine. was that there was dancing, but um let me double check with you. Let's hope there okay. isn't. Go on, Francis. Well, it's you know, sure. they have they're having all these people and they're having like a banquet catered event. Yeah, I you know. know. It's yeah. gonna have music and it's that gonna part. be dancing. Yeah, people yeah. are gonna dance. Well, yeah. I think I think this was uh, hi everybody, it's Ian Nicholson. I think that was really relevant if we do a, a wedding 
or a gala or a fundraiser where there would be a band, there, there would be dancing. So that was, I, I think that's where the, the, the confusion might come in uh, because it will be used for events, for charities, for fundraisers, for weddings. Yeah, but music makes people dance, whether it's from a band. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. As as part of a function, you would right, have dancing, right. like you know, the the, the yeah. father, the bride, and the and the bride doing the first dance. I mean, it happened. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. So I have that confirmation as well. We would like to have dancing. I'm sorry if it was inconsistent. If we, if we could, yeah. yeah. And it, it's not just that page. There are other pages where you find the same inconsistency. You got to go through it, Max. Okay. Understood. So, um, go on, Francis. Page seven, and they'll talk about uh, musical and, and non musical uh, entertainment, uh, dancing indicated. Right. That's where the first inconsistency is, I think. From page one to page seven. <clears throat> and there's similar stuff where it says um, you'll have security personnel, which we know, but. Nothing is checked off for outside promoters or independent DJs on that page, and yet on other pages it says you'll have that. So, All right, well, let me clarify it then. Yes, of course, security personnel, that's necessary right. for a building of, of, of this size. Um, we, there is no plans to have outside promoters or, or independent DJs. This is, a, this is not a, a, a promoted event space. It's, uh, it's for primarily for use as an art gallery, and there may be private functions because the space is available to be rented out. Okay, so the fifth and the sixth floors, generally that's what it's going to be. And that's what you need the liquor license for. That's to right. To be able to serve liquor on five and six. Liquor for yeah, private for functions. Five and six for private functions. That's right. Okay. And before I move to the next one, if, 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 if would you like me to move to the next one now? No. Um, I found one other thing. Um, it's, I'm not sure we're on that page still may have been on the 1 before it says there will be deliveries on Fletcher from 6 AM to 6 PM. Fletcher is the very small street south of John and it has residential units on it across the street. So I think 6 AM for deliveries on Fletcher is not a good idea. Um, and it should be later. It should at the very least be 8 a.m., if not 9. On that point, Karen, so there is some restriction we have based on the way the building is constructed. Fletcher is where the loading dock is for the building, so there has to be deliveries there. We can't reconstruct that, but we understand, I understand the comment you just made about the time range, um, and if there are you know, if there's a desire to, to sort of tighten that up so that it's not so early, um, we, yeah. we, we're flexible there. Okay, so w would you be willing to do 9 a.m.? Let me ask my team and we'll, I'll let you know in a minute. Okay, so we can put that with the other outside stuff that we have to deal with. Okay, so moving on to the 10th floor where we got Let's Pow Wow. That's right, 10th floor. Tavern. Three stand-up bars. That's right, so it, Tavern is the, is the legal license classification it's a tavern license the reason why it's a tavern license is because it's not a restaurant it doesn't have a kitchen and and and, and three course meals etc the way a restaurant does so therefore it's a tavern but what this is in the real world is uh, a social co-working space so what do i mean by that i think the floor plans really really illustrate it um it's not like a we work where there's little individual cubicles the feeling is to, is much is more just is more like perhaps the um, the lobby of a hotel. There's lots of there's lots of couches. There's lots of um, uh, tables where people can sit and do work at. Again, a lot of the the, the people in the building we expect them to be uh, entrepreneurs, startups. They may not want to sit in their office because, of course, this building will have traditional office space. They may want to go down here and and sit at a at, at a table um sit at a counter um and so that's that's what you're going to see when you come into here um mm -hmm. obviously we want to be able to serve them alcoholic beverages um mm -hmm. three bars it's there are there are two what we would call traditional bars i guess that you know they that look like a bar although you'll they'll also be selling 
you know, food as well. I and mean, we have a food menu and it's a place where you can get food and it's going to be good food. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that, you know, we have the, the lounge menu, there's sandwiches, there's grilled food, there's, there's pizza, there's salads, there's starters, there's, you know, it's wraps, et cetera. We want people coming here for lunch too. The third bar is, um, is more like a little, um, it, it's smaller than the rest. It's, um, it's a, it's a drink counter where there'll be someone, uh, you know, uh, serving drinks to, to people who want to purchase them. Um, so that's the 10th floor. And so this is all now, and this is for, okay. You can, you can go over all of that in terms of who has access and all of that later. Okay. But this is, this is, this is the physical portion of the 10th floor and the bars and stuff. So, okay. 15th floor culinary pursuits. Okay. That's the last one, if I understand. So it's, it's, no, it's not. It's two different. So this breaks down into two different yes. applications. Yes. It's really one restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. It's one right. restaurant. The reason why you have one application for the 15th floor and then a separate application for, for the 16th, 16th through 18th, 18th floor. The, 18th floor. the mm -hmm. reason for that is because the 15th floor is not directly connected to the 16th floor for customers. So mm -hmm. under the liquor law, it, it can't be one license because a license has to be contiguous for customers. So even though back of house it's connected and it's going to function as one cohesive operation, which I'll summarize in a minute, it mm -hmm. is technically two different liquor licenses um, because one's for the 15th, which is, you know, one area and 16 through 18 is, 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 is accessed differently by customers. So, um, on the 15th floor, I mean, overall, what this is, it's a, it's a restaurant. It's got event capacity, um, photos, studios, production rooms are all on, you know, in, in this area, um, on the, the 15th floor itself is, is, is the main restaurant area and the floor plans again, I think do a good job at illustrating that. Although I think you'll find the floor plans for that, um, connected to the, the, the 16th through 18th floor applications, you know, so maybe we can go to that one, but it's, um, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, a high end restaurant. It's, uh, the menu shows the, you know, uh, what, what's being offered. Um, and so that's the restaurant component. Um, there is also room on the, the, the 16th through 18th floor again for, um, for Wait, how many, oh, how many people on the 15th floor? Let me get that in front of me. It was fewer than um, yes, large. It was fewer. It's yes. the main restaurant. How many? You know, one hundred eighty people. One hundred eighty okay. people for the main restaurant. That's sixty-two but seats. Here it, 17 here it says only seventy. Pardon me. You, here you've got seventy, sixty-two seats, and then eight seats. The, the well, the the, the, the public the, capacity yeah. is one hundred and eighty people, but they're only having sixty-two seats in the dining area and eight seats. Awesome. Often, and I think, I know, you know, this too, Karen, but, but often, you know, when, when the architects, they file with DOB, it's based on the number of people. It's based on a formula. It's amount of square feet multiplied by something and you, and you get the number of people, uh, you know, the, the, the seats show, you know, in my view, I think it paints a more accurate picture because that shows how many and people will be, will be sitting and dining at the restaurant. <laughs> Okay, well, that's it. Does everybody okay understand what the 15th floor is? Culinary. I just want to be very clear so everybody understands this, please. That this is only this is not for the public. No, that's not correct. He's gonna yeah, and Susan, that that's what I want to just get to the layout, and then he can explain who can come in and what it's for. Okay, and we fair enough. Do. We then, can get into that, and we then, can also then, get then into the out the traffic study. Go on, go on, I want to understand going. what the facility is, so people have a vision in their head in terms of where these people are going and what they're going to be doing. Okay, okay, so we're on the 16th to 18th floors. So the 16th to 18th floors are again are more of the same restaurant that's on the 15th floor. So it's uh, it's a large restaurant operation. In addition, there are, as I've said. Um, Photo studios, production rooms, there's the ability to have um, events. Uh, again, I think the floor plans are, are, are good to, to look at because that really illustrates it. Um, and if you want, if it helps, I can take you floor by floor. So there you have on the 16th floor, which is in front of you now, you have more of the restaurant. You see those are, those are restaurant 
seats. Uh, there's some, there's a, you know, there, there's, they sort of wrap around on the side. There's also some back of house on, on, on the bottom right corner. I'll let that, I'll let Here. you stand over that for a minute so everybody can take their time seeing. Here again. Down at the bottom there, you know, there's some private meeting rooms, you know, if someone in the building and maybe a slightly larger company, if they want to have a business meeting or a business dinner, they could book a, a, a private dining room and, uh, and, and, and do it there. A similar, a smaller private dining room now appearing in the bottom, you know, now in the middle of the screen. All right. So that was, that was 16 that we're moving away from now on 17, um, <clears throat> lots of meeting rooms. So this is all meeting rooms, um, smaller meeting rooms. But again, uh, the idea, if you, <clears throat> pardon me, if you think of a, a hotel that has lots of meeting rooms for private functions, the idea is to make the tenants of the building feel like they are in a nice hotel. So a lot of the amenities that you typically find in a hotel that you don't typically find in your typical cold you know, office building, they want to have offered here. So you would envision this space as like you may see in a hotel, a floor with lots of meeting rooms. Typically, nothing's going on in there. You know, if there's no meeting happening, it's just an empty room with nothing happening. But there is the ability to book those rooms out. We don't expect alcoholic beverages to be frequently sold there, but we included it as part of the restaurant license because, A, it's all connected. Mm -hmm. It would be serviced by the restaurant. Um, and, B, we want you know, people to have the option, if they'd like, to have food and beverages mm -hmm. in those rooms. So that's 17 and 18 is, you know, gets you into more of the, the interesting aspects of this building. Like I said, a few times now, the goal is to have, um, you know, entrepreneurial, small and mid-sized companies that are in arts and culture and fashion. So there's, there's a photo studio. Um, there's what we call content studios where people can do podcasts, um, you know, uh, there's a screening room if, if there's, you know, for, for, for if, we have, if we have film producers renting space, they can utilize that room for, for film screenings, et cetera. So similar to the 17th floor in the sense that there's not going to be a constant alcoholic beverage service here. This is not, uh, you know, like you could walk here and there's, 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 you know, there's, there's constant alcoholic beverage activity, but these are, these are flexible spaces. So in the event that a building tenant wants okay, to do something where there's alcoholic beverages, they want right. to be able to have that there. And they'll be able to get it from inside, catered from inside. From up, from down, from up, from the restaurant. Yeah. Right. Exactly. All right. So on 16, 17 and 18, what is the capacity? Maybe. Get to that page. Sixteen is four hundred thirty people. Seventeen is one hundred eighty people, and eighteenth floor is four hundred two people. So the total capacity is one thousand twelve people. Yeah, and look, I look, I, I I see I see the reaction, Karen. I get it. Um, I think you know for whatever it's worth, and you could take this for whatever it's worth. You know what we hope we're getting across tonight is that you're not. We're not asking you to approve a nightclub with that capacity. Most of the spaces here are, you know, not going to be typically used for alcoholic beverage service. You could see that from the layout, um, uh, you know, and, uh, but yes, there, there would be times, you know, it's a big building. These are big floors. The DOB occupancy is what it is. And there would be times where we would be serving alcohol there. Right. Good. Oh, no, Francis, keep going. No, that's it. That's uh, the the 16th to 18th floor. The the um and the that's the the 1,012 is the total capacity for those three floors. What about the entire building? The entire building, I don't know the answer to. Does anybody on my team know the answer to that question? I mean, we're not licensing all the floors of the building, so no, it may not have. Yeah, oh, just we want to know. Like how many people are going to be in the building if something happens and we kind of look at getting people out of the buildings if, if you have a complete. Body. Fair enough. We're also, you know, we're not the building owner. We're just, you know, we're doing the, 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 um, you know, Max, I have that number. You have it. All right, perfect. What's the answer? 7247 is the total capacity for the office building. 7247. Yeah. For a fully occupied office. Yeah. Building. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. And all right. do you ever, uh, 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 Okay, so 
we we have a breakdown in terms of what's supposed to be happening on each of these floors. Um, that's their concern in terms of how they organize the scheduling and who's on first and who's on second. The thing that we're looking at is, you know, whether they should be approved to have a liquor license to serve liquor in these different venues, if you feel comfortable with it, I think. Well, but the question I still have is who is going to come to this, these venues? Sure, is so it totally can. internal? Is it going to be invite only that you would get checked in downstairs and you could have a thousand and twelve people? Uh, what's going to happen here, Max? Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the building. Like all buildings in the financial district, this is no different. It's a secure building, so no one's getting through the lobby without either having some business in the building. When I when I say business, I mean either you know, you're a tenant. So you you know have a pass or whatever to get through. You are an invitee of a tenant, so you're there to attend a business meeting and and you get a pass to get through. Or you are a member of the public and you wish to patronize one of the establishments we're talking about tonight. So and and that's the question that Susan has. So I want to give more detail to to that last point. Um, the three spaces with liquor licenses that you're considering tonight, all of them are open to the public in different ways. So the art gallery on five to six, that's a public catering license. There's no such thing as a private catering license. So what that means is, you know, although obviously we are going to be promoting mm -hmm. that space to building tenants, and we're going to be saying to building tenants, hey, we have this great gallery on five and six. We want you to show your artwork there. If you want to have a private function there, we have a liquor license. We want you to have your your, 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 your catered affair there, et cetera. Well, that's going to be our thrust. Um, it is a public license in the sense that if, if, you know, I called and said, I want to have my daughter's bat mitzvah there and I have nothing to do with the building, um, subject to availability. And as long as I could, you know, afford it, et cetera, you know, I could book my event there as well. It's a catered space. Um, a private, excuse me, a public catering license. And that and remind that's me the law. capacity of that. Got a lot of papers in front of me. Let me pull that one out. That one is 420 on the fifth floor, four, 240 on the, on the sixth floor. 420. And 240. And that's just, and that's just the law. There's no such thing as a catering license where, um, you know, if I call up and I have nothing to do with the building and say, I want to have my daughter's bat mitzvah, you know, there's no, there's no license that where the person on the other end of the line says, sorry, we're just for this building only, unless it's a private members club, which is not what this license is for a number of reasons. So, so Max, help me. If I, if, if I'm an individual and I want to have access to this wonderful facility, what are my options? Well, we're, we're talking just about five and six, right, Francis? No, um, let's look at the whole thing so people can get a sense of. All right, well, can we please look at them separately? Yeah. Okay. All Thank right. So, for, so for, so for five and six, so for five and six, Francis, most of the time, this is just going to be an art gallery. So if with no liquor served, so if, if there's a show going on, you can walk into the building, you could say, hi, I'd like to go to the art gallery on five and six, and you'll be checked in. You'll give your ID, whatever you can go up there and you can look at the art. Just you know, as of myself, I could just come out my house and go there and just like an art gallery in Chelsea or whatever. You're in Hell's Kitchen. You're walking down the street and you see there's, no, there's an art no gallery. No cost whatsoever to get no into. Cost. Five no, and no six. cost. No, that's if there's an if that that's if there's an art gallery thing. Okay. That's if they have artwork going. I can on. get into the building and go to the to the art gallery. That's right. <laughs> Will now I be able to go anyplace else? No. Well, okay. well, maybe to the restaurant. We, I mean, I know you want to talk about these all together but if i could just do them one at a time i think it'll be clear so okay. so Let's that's keep it separate francis to okay. yeah. so that's so that's the art gallery but it's a catering license so they may not just be having an art gallery thing going on maybe they have a private event going on maybe one of the tenants of the building is is doing you know an opening of one of their their art you know of their of their um of their artwork and it's 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 invite only 
if that's the case, you can't go up there. You know, if, if, if you know, if, if they're having a private art showing from, you know, on February 8th from six to eight and you're not on the list, you're not invited. You can't come up there. Um, you know, and then that would be a classic private function that is appropriate for a catering license. Just like if I'm having my wedding at a, at a place that has a catering license, if you're not invited, you're not, you're not welcome in. Um, okay. so that's, that's five and six. Um, Moving to 10, which is the so I, 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 I want to go back so okay. I'm very clear. So I have heard there is an art gallery opening. I do not have to pay to go in there. If the, if the art gallery exhibition they're doing is is one where they're not requiring payment, I guess what, let me make something clear about that. Most of the time, there's not going to be alcohol here, okay? Because right. it's just an art gallery. Right. Okay. Just like any other art gallery, sometimes like if it's the middle of the day and there's, you know, there's nothing really going on, but the paintings are on the wall, you can come in, you can go up there, you can look at the paintings. Sometimes they may have an exhibition still with no alcohol, but they may have an exhibition where just like a museum, you got to pay like to get it. They want, you know? they want you to make a contribution or whatever, whatever, or whatever a ticket. Yeah. yeah. A ticket is, you know, whatever, you know, $16 or whatever, still no alcohol, but you know, like you know, but whatever. it's a cover fee to go yeah. in. Like a museum. yeah, right, exactly. When there is alcohol, it's going to be in connection with a private function, and because that's what that's the only thing this license is for. Is okay, for so the only time there's going to be alcohol is when it connected with a private function. Exactly, that's the type of okay. liquor license we're applying okay. for. That's all we want here, and that and that's why we're applying for this type. Of for five and six, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're clear about that. Okay. Okay. Should we, can we move to 10? Yep. I move to 10. All right. So 10 is also, you know, as I said, the type of liquor license there is a tavern license, um, which means stand up bars. With well, it, means it, doesn't, it means it doesn't have enough food to be. A, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Susan. I didn't mean to talk over you. That's all right. So it's, it's a tavern license. All that means is that there's not enough food for it to qualify as a restaurant, but it's still an open to the public license. There will be later on. You're gonna we're gonna be back before you for some other licenses that we're not ready to to do for you right I don't now. Want them, yeah, because they, because they're <laughs> they're down in the future. But we've been transparent about that, and so in the tours and all the outreach and everything, we've yeah, told yeah, you yeah, yeah. the Go big on. picture of the all the licenses we want to apply for. So down the road, you'll have an application for a private members club license, which which is private, but different. But that's different. So I'm that's just drawing okay. a contrast. That's not what this is. This is an open. Okay, so right flight. now, this this the tenth floor. Yeah. If I come in to the art gallery and which I haven't paid for, I just saw some nice art, and I decide that I want to have something to drink, uh, I can go to the tenth floor. This is not just for members of the building or whatever. This is open to the public. So I can go in that's, as that person. That's right. You're gonna have to go back down into the into the the, the lobby and tell them you want to go to the 10th go floor on. and they'll let you go to the 10th floor. But this is open to the public. Now let me give yeah. a caveat. We're not promoting it that way. In other words, we are not making an effort to go out there into the world and invite Say, there's a let, let's powwow bar over here. You can go in and we're not doing that. Um right. we're not required to by law and we're not. Um, but because this is technically an open to the public license and you're in the know, Francis, you know, we're not going to stop you from going right. up there. And right. when you go up there, they'll be happy to, uh, to sell you a drink mm -hmm. or some food, hopefully. Right. Okay. Um, they'll, they also will be a, you know, for, you know, and this is also, you know, consistent with the law. If you are, um, a tenant of the building who, again, we really, that's who we're targeting for this space we're going to waive the cover fee to come in. But if you're not a tenant of the building and you want to go up there, we are allowed to charge you a small cover fee. And, oh, and, and okay. We, and so getting back to me coming into the art gallery, right. if I decide I want to go to the powwow, there's a, there's a possibility. You have to go might, downstairs. I have to go downstairs and get checked in, but there's a possibility that there might be a cover charge. What do you mean possibility? No, there will. There, I'm telling you there will be. I mean, we have the, okay. We have the, there's going to be a cover charge for me to come back up and go to the powwow to spend more money to drink, eat and drink. That's right. Okay. I just want to understand. Okay. And I'll understand. Okay. okay. We don't know what that cover charge will be or what the, 
Right, but it's free. It's you know for the people the to the other group of people that you're going to talk about more in more detail for the other group of people that just that are part of the building. You know, they can just go there and they'll have reduced rates or whatever. We are going to have a a members only you know right. establishment okay. in this building, but it's it's not before you right now because we're right. not we're not ready okay. to do that with you yet. Okay, all right. Is everybody clear on the tenth floor then, and how you get from the fifth and sixth? To the tenth floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there are three. There are three standing bars with a capacity of. I, I'm right. I'm confused about this one here uh, because mm -hmm. the other three are at 180, and this says 240. So where am I? What do I have here? I'm like tied up in my underwear for a minute. I can't quite figure it out. The 40 is on the ten. Is the tenth floor. That's right. And what's the 180 I have? I don't know. Well, I think you have, I think you have the old version, Susan. I think you might have printed the old version. Um, they had corrected that. And I sent so the more tenth, I'm sorry. So okay. the 10th floor is 240. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the number of seats uh, in the dining area is 202. And yeah, the yeah, bar yeah, area yeah, is 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, the 180 is the 15th floor. Well, okay. yeah, that's where you're getting. 30 and 402. Yeah, the, 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 the 15th on. floor. Okay, so yeah. Susan, you're okay with the 10th floor? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all right. Okay, so 15th floor. All right, so this, so fifth, so the restaurant, How which again. How do I get to the 15th floor? <laughs> so restaurant, which is the 15th floor and up, that's a normal, regular, open to the public restaurant. We want you to come. We're going to be advertising it as such. If you if you come, you tell security, I want to go up to the restaurant. You can go up there and see if there's a table available. You could make a reservation in advance if you want. You can go up there. Mm -hmm. um, it's a regular, your, 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 your normal open to the public restaurant. That's so this is going to be promoted, floor. yeah, promoted as a, a a restaurant in the community. You right. know, anybody can can go to. That's correct. Okay. And then, okay, and then the sixteenth through eighteenth. So that's more of you know as we went through you know sixteen you know you know let me pull the floor plans out you're you're pulling it up great yeah that's you know. where the studios <laughs> are and the conference rooms and other stuff right right exactly so that's part of the part restaurant of but those will be that private. those ask, sorry pardon me Susan private it's part of the restaurant license, but those are private in the sense that where that's only for building tenants. So if you want, you know, again, these art studios and things like that, that's part of the, of the vision that we're selling to uh, tenants here. And so that's going to be for them only. So I won't be able to come from the fifth floor to the 16th floor. No. If, if, if there's, if there's a private function there, you can, if and I'm invited to, or whatever, but you can't but just walk up there and go, you know, uh, okay. you know, it's go not open the to the public. It's only open to, Whatever. It's not open to the hoi polloi. It's right. It's only okay. open to the you know what. Okay. Okay. Right. So Max, can I can I ask this? So this is basically rented space and only available for whoever is renting it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want rented. I I just want to make you know rented. In, you know, it's it's not a lease. It's not like yeah, permanently no, rented. It's it, it, it's available to be booked on like whatever fine. hourly it's basis. By, but it's booked by tenants. If I understand Max right, correctly, right. the sixteenth okay. to eighteenth, so we're all clear. Thank you, Onej, for that. Um, is that is for tenants only? Mm -hmm. Am I correct, Max? Yes, Susan. Yeah, they they have specific events and whatever. Do photo shoots, production, that help them all. whatever. All right. Whatever. Yes. Okay. I just want to. Um, wow ask my team one thing i want to make sure I, I didn't misstate it on the on the 16th floor there is the, is is poor is do we have a portion of the open to the public restaurant on the 16th floor or or is it what i said it's you know because it's 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 tenants only could ian answer that yeah the um the north part of that can be rented out by the public so you've got the canteen on the left, which is for the building. You've got the Wolf restaurant, which is 
public and can be rented out privately. And then you've got the event space there, which is all furniture layouts, but it can be rented out by the public as well. All right, so I, I misstated that. So I, that's why I wanted to make sure it was it was corrected. Do we do I need to say that again, or does he need yeah, to? Yeah, well, so then, but so that's another uh, 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 catering place that the public that I could think think of it, Francis, as a a, a large you know ballroom or large private dining room of, of your local restaurant, in the sense that most many restaurants have this. Oh, yeah, it's have, uh, it's exactly. A, Exactly. Oh, to the public Excellent. restaurant, but they have a, an event room in the back. I mean, that, right, that's right. what that is. And which floor oh, is this? This is again? connected to the fifteenth floor. Then that's correct. This yeah. is the all connected because the food no, is no, no, on. No, no, I guess in my oh. head, I understand. And you see the stair. You see the, the stair. You see, you see the staircase there as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. What okay. else? So if I came in and I wanted to, uh, so I could rent the fifteenth floor, right? Well, that's no, that's a restaurant. I mean, like I guess they, you I know, mean, you can, yeah. restaurants can do buyouts. So I guess yeah. if you know for the right price, if you want to buy out the whole restaurant for a night, you could. But that's not really how they're designing it. Okay. Okay. As I said, no outdoor space in any of these all under your hourly guidelines. So, can I just summarize, um, Max, if you don't mind? And right ahead, Onesh. Okay, so what I have so far, because I'm making notes for the resolutions, uh, we have on the fifth and the sixth floor is an art gallery requiring a catering license. There will be no cover fee on regular days, except for when alcohol is being served during private functions, correct? No. No, most of it was correct until you got to the cover fee part. So the, the, when when alcohol is not being served, members of the public may come in either for with a cover fee or without a cover fee, depending uh, on what they're doing. Right, there. depends on who's showing the gal. Yeah, they may ask for, uh, okay. Right, so that's when so alcohol that's is not being to the, uh, uh Subject to the uh, whatever the person who's having the show Right. So if we're you know fortunate okay. enough to get your approval, what I think the resolution would say is um, on the fifth floor, it's an art gallery with a catering establishment license. When at, when alcohol is not being served, mm -hmm. members it's of open the, to the public. Open to the public for a cover fee or not, depending you know you know with or without a cover depending fee. Depending on the function. Yes. Depending on the right. function, and alcohol will only be served for private functions. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. Moving on. Uh, to the 10th floor uh, for a tavern type license. Uh, the public can patronize uh, the tavern, and but there will be a cover charge to enter, correct? Cover yep. charge for members of the public, yes. Yep. There will be a charge, and there are three bars in that. Stand up, three stand up bars. And there's some seating. There too, yeah, right? Exactly. But there's three stand up bars. You can sit down in the chair, right? You know, yeah, yeah. Three, I mean, we call them customer bars, three customer bars, <laughs> places where you can go order a drink, but there's lots of places to sit. And okay. Pow Wow, Pow Wow can hold 240 people. 240 people, right. Okay, moving on to the 15th floor is a restaurant and will be just have like the regular restaurant type. Uh, oh, it's an upscale restaurant. That's right, Francis. It's a main upscale re restaurant. Yes. Uh, it's a high end restaurant open to the public. Open to the public and okay. buyouts. Restaurants always could have buyouts if they want them. Yeah, but we limit you, you know. Fair we enough. Would you? Not, not always. Times. You don't always. Well, you know, lately, <laughs> lately. frequently, <laughs> that's are true. Are we going to committee? Are we going to, to, are we going to put a cap on the buyouts or not? Mm. Francis. Um, that's hard to call right now. Cause you don't know what the flow of the whole building's going to be. So, who cares? Uh, okay. So to start out, maybe Hush. one a month. No, who cares if there's a buyout? We do because it's traffic. Wait, Joel, don't don't go there. 
Uh, I think for, uh, uh, Max, we'll give you one a month. That's too that we can't. That that's that that's too tough for us. It, it, we we need the option to do buyouts. You know. How many? What are we talking about? I'm not. We're not going to give you free reign. Ian, give a. Can you please give Susan an ideal number? Uh, don't be shy. I mean, the about restaurant it. right now is only open for breakfast and lunch. So if we can't have the ability to sell the restaurant at dinner for private events, like well, that hold on, Ian, it's, it, oh, stop, Ian. It's going to be able to be open for dinner, and we have yeah. hours of operation that allow it. So can you give talking Susan talking about a buyout? Yeah. Can you give Susan, you know, what, what is it? What, you know, uh, three a one, week, one, maybe one, a, maybe one a week, maybe one, one a week. week. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 if, a, if, if one of the our tenants wants to buy the restaurant out, we're going to tell them, no, you can't. No, uh, I'm not going to tell them anything, but, uh, 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 whether it's a tenant or outside could do a buyout. Am I correct? Right. I mean, it's true we that restrict, we would restrict outside people from doing buyouts, but we would have a hard time trying to keep our tenants happy if we tell them, no, we can't, you can't. Ian, we, we can't legally restrict outside people from doing buyouts. We have to allow outside people as well. well I, I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, it would be very hard for us, like if somebody wanted to buy at the restaurant and we had the, the space available. I mean, Max, I'll take your guidance on here, but. Can we do one a week? I mean, that's, you know, that, that's, that's maximum. They want to have, you know, flexibility. It did, you know, Susan, no. Megan, um, since it's a new license, can we limit them for one year with the option to come back after we see uh, those with traffic flow, Megan. things like that? Yeah, I was going to suggest, I was going to suggest put a time limit on, cause this is a startup. You have, you don't even have an idea in terms of how many buyouts you're going to have. I have no with trouble them. with that. You well, that's want, why we want to have the flexibility. Week? I'll call on you in a minute, Mariama. Yeah. Okay. Give him one a week. I mean, that would be great if we could. Ian, Ian, let him let him talk. Let him talk. Yeah. I, I'm willing to give him one a week. I mean, I how don't know. Long? All right, you for are. How long? Francis? For how long? For the year. They have to come I mean, back. I, I think that's a lot in, in per that is, I do too, Mary. Okay, then tell me, committee. I'm you very just willing to the last people two per year. Yeah, I would one say a week two we're a giving month. them fifty-two per year. Let's do, let's what do two, two a month, month. Two a month yes. for a year. Could we do well, two a month? I think Mary is very. I mean, uh, Francis yeah. is very kind, and I'm willing to do that. <laughs> two a month. Two a month for the first year, and you come back, and if you feel like you need to make more money, we'll hear you. Could we do two a two a month for six months, and then come back? Francis, mm. Mariama. I think the year is more fair to the community at large, to be honest. I mean, I have Max, to this is, you know, this is uh, whatever it is internal, but we're all looking further and all the traffic and everything else. Let's, I think, don't uh, be taking have been over the whole neighborhood, you know, that often. You can come oh. back in a year. God willing, you could do two a month, you know. Who knows? Yeah, we hope you can do two a month. Uh, and you do too, but let's do it two a month. Two a month for a year. And then you'll come back. Okay. All right. Miriam, you had another question. You know, that was basically it. I just wanted to put some perspective that we've given the last um, speaker literally two per year. So this is very generous. This is still 24 per year. It, it's still a, a huge disparity based on what we've been doing tonight with other people. So I, I think it's a fair compromise in consideration of the rest of the neighborhood, the rest of the businesses, the residents and everything else. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mariama. And, and, and uh, we recognize that we don't, you know, obviously we pushed for what we wanted, but um, we think you're being fair. So right, thank so you. So keep going, Onesh. Are you done? Yeah. You got all no. your info? Okay, and this is, this is only for this rest for, for the 15th floor. That's only for the 15th floor, the restaurant. Now moving on to 16, 17, and 18, which are all private spaces. All right. Um, well, these, no. Well, well, no, so the, the 17 and 18 are all private spaces in, in, in your, in your words, which I think are, are fine. 16, which is what's on the screen currently, uh, yes. as you, as you heard is, right. is, in, is, is in some ways an extension of the downstairs That's restaurant. Right. So right. there, there, you know, th that, there's the private dining room there. 
Um, there's. Um, okay, there's, so we're going to connect yeah. that to the other one in terms of your buyouts. Correct. Right. Uh, yeah. We. Could, okay, Max. We're yeah. going to connect the 16th floor to the 15th floor with your buyout. Buyout. Yeah. Buyout. Yes. Under, understood. That. Yes. Okay. So we can package that all together. Okay, Onej. Um, so you're saying the 16th is an extension of the 15th, which is the restaurant. If that's the case, right. then why wasn't the 16th included with the application? Why was it 15, 16 on one application and 17, 18 on it's, another? It's a, it's a very fair question, Onej. And the answer is that based on the way the building is built, because customers can't get from 15 to 16 without going back into the building's elevators. Legally, we can't have 15 and 16 be under one liquor license, okay. even, even though back of house, it's all connected. So when I say connected, what I mean is through the back of house and operationally, like we will be viewing this as one operation. Um, and, you know, food will come from 15 up to 16, 17, 18, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But you will have a, you, you cannot, once you're in 15 and you want to go to 16, you can't. You have to go out and get in the elevator. I have to go out and get into the elevator. But I mean, there's really no reason for you. Like if you're having dinner in 15, you're not going to 16. There's 16 nothing to do I got it. But I if you got a buyout going on, if I got an event and I got an event on 15 and also I'm, I got it like that, I can have it in 16 too. That means, you know, my people will have to go to both places and there'll be a lot of movement. Elevator and, traffic. Elevated yeah, traffic. Yeah, and that's our problem. And that's we're, not know, our problem. That's your yeah, problem. not our problem. Okay. But we're, okay. we everybody understands that the okay. So the so sixteenth and fifteenth in terms of buyouts and all that is is all under the same conditions. Okay. 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 Great. My I would like to just make sure that I have everything for everything for the resolution. Yeah. So okay. there's there's one thing there's one thing we didn't clarify. Um. Max was going to check with his client, but we didn't hear back on the hours for deliveries was, on Fletcher Street. Well, we didn't Thank get you, to Karen. that, yet, Karen. Thank oh. you, Karen. I was about. Going, I was going to circle back to that after. We're going to get to that, Karen. With, okay. We're, dealing, we're okay. still dealing with internal. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. So, Onej, do you have everything you need? I hey, one, like one, can I, one more thing. Can I ask one more question first before we finalize? So I know on one, if you have like one location over 600 people, you need a cabaret license also. Um, but oh, Max, not, correct if it's correct spread across that. the building, do we not need one? No. Well, no, just, no just, it's just, not a cabaret license. Before we wrote it down. Well, there, was, used to, there used to be a different kind of liquor license for um, uh, Karen, let me explain. It had what, what, 600 or more people. Well, that, 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 that's a cabaret that, license. Six hundred oh, wow. people. No, it's not. It's a different thing. The, it's a version of large Everybody venue. Stop. Max, go for it and try to be clear. It's confusing because there's two different things, both with the name cabaret license. So it always confuses people. There was a New York City license that the Department of Consumer Affairs used to give called a cabaret license, and that was for dancing. And that's what Mayor de Blasio and the city council abolished in 2017. That's city. Turning to state, there's always been, since 1933, a type of liquor license called a uh, cabaret liquor license. That still exists. That's if you are having an occupancy of over 600 people and have regular scheduled music and dancing performances. So that's for like big concert venues right that's what i'm talking about but I'm, I'm clarifying that we don't need that because this is a different setup with several several different spaces right? that's right that's right you're absolutely right mary and none of these spaces okay. are, require a cabaret liquor license all right i just wanted to make sure before we went into writing thank you all right. okay. okay so thank you now before we move on before we move on to any other questions or any other comments i would just like to finish my clarification for resolution. Now, so for, we did the 15th floor. We understood that the 16th floor is an extension of the 15th and 17th and 18th are just for private spaces. That means that the resolution would have two separate, this is for the 16th to the 18th, 
18 floors. There would be two, two separate set, two separate wordings. So I'd have to write whereas is separately for the 16th as well as the 17th and 18th, correct? Yeah, I think that's right, Onej, because the 16th right. is going to be more like, you know, the, the, the 15th and, you know, and, and the 17th and 18th are, okay, are private. Yes. Thank you very much. You may. And Onej, where, where have you been the last few years? CB1 needed you. We're, luck we're lucky. He's we're here now, so. He's very <laughs> happy. I love All it. Right, we're love happy. It. So, so, Max. Okay. Now, wait. We have three other things that I want to wrap this up. Right. All right. We have the garbage and the collection and the time. I'm not going to worry about the deliveries, I don't think, but I guess the deliveries will also come in on Fletcher, will they not? Deliveries will come in on Fletcher. That's where our loading dock is. And that was Karen's question before. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. So, Traffic on that small street. Mm. How are you going to deal with it? Well, you guys, may I speak to that, Bex? Well, well, hold on one second. I'd like to make one small point, and then Ian can make a, a, a longer point. So, um, actually, you know what? No, Ian, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, you know, we met with um, at our meeting. We did. We got some good feedback about having people on the streets uh, managing traffic and and so so on and so forth when we're doing events and what have you. So that's something that we're going to incorporate into our operations plan but furthermore on our loading dock we do have a loading dock master who is going to be controlling uh, you know the, the the arrivals and departures of goods and deliveries so we're going to keep that moving uh and make sure that there aren't obstructions there and that there that the flow of traffic is contiguous and continuous uh throughout the course of the day so that we don't have any issues with the neighbors we um we had a detailed traffic study karen to your direct point um you know we said six you said nine we can't do nine because they're serving breakfast here and, okay. and, and the breakfast food needs to arrive. We, we, we can do seven. We, we have to get the breakfast food into the building. Is there any other way it can come in? No, that's their loading dock. It's always been the loading dock for the building. There's just no way to, the, the willing to go to seven. Karen, let them go yeah. to seven. The service yeah. elevator is right there, ma'am. Fine. Okay. Okay. So. I and the only other thing, Max, I, I want to understand, and Ian, is how you're going to deal with um why am I blanking the street? Where's everything going? John. John, thank you very much. <laughs> how that's gonna be handled. So, and you so, said you're gonna have some some traffic control people there for your events. Am yes. I correct? So, yeah, so we have the, um, we have Kevin from equity environmental, the traffic engineer who did the traffic study. Um, I'm going to let him speak. I know we took a lot of your time, Kevin, don't, you know, get, speak succinctly, please. Cause these, these folks have heard a lot from us, but let me just say, you're not even, all right. But, so let me just say, make one point on it, Susan, which is that, you know, this building of course was a very dense commercial office building. And so people came and left all the time. And so, you know, we're obviously, you know, we're doing something different there. We get that, you know, that was a nine to five sort of building. We were more distributed, but on a whole, one of the things that we wanted to emphasize is that, you know, Water Street and John Street since 1983 handled, you know, traffic from the AIG building and our occupancy of that building is going to be less dense than when it was used as AIG's office building. So just, you know, from, so just from that perspective alone, it, it, it we're starting off, I think less dense, but your point that you're going to make in a second is well taken, which of course is that we're going to, you know, we operate a little later. These are going to be events and we get all of that. And because of that, we've engaged Kevin. He's done an excellent traffic study. He's made recommendations. We're going to abide by his recommendations. And do you want to hear him say 60 seconds worth of, of comments? Sure. All right. 60 yeah, seconds. We have constructions and you got city bike. <laughs> Go ahead, yes. um, so everything that Max said, I want to reiterate the unique aspect of this building is um, that it's, it's sort of vertically integrated commercial village where you have what's called linked trips between the spaces where office users are going to use a lot of these, you know, individual food and beverage spaces that are identified. So that will lower unique traffic generation emanating from outside of the building. 
The other aspect is this area is highly connected by transit. In terms of the frontages on John Street, so obviously you have city bikes covering entire Water Street. You have commercial loading zone on Commercial Street and you have a portion um, on Front Street as well. The unique aspect of this, however, is that you have Fletcher handling deliveries. You have two frontages where you can temporarily alight. You know, in terms of special events, we would have flagmen, we would have stewards assisting and moving the traffic. Regular operations from a day-to-day -day standpoint, it, I've analyzed the entire building, the entire potential future building envelope in terms of the number of drop-offs, the parking spaces required from private car generation, and the, the amount of private uh, autos or that may be dropping off in the area. And I think we all understand how these work, particularly in the financial district. You don't have to drop off always at the curb. You know? that's, uh, Kevin, you, yes. that's not the issue. You're absolutely correct. The issue is the large venues that you're going right. to have. And you answered that you're going to have traffic control. Yes, ma'am. To have people out there, flag waivers or whatever they are. Right. And that, that is our biggest concern. Right. That's on John. And people live closer yes. to front. You know, there's there. It, it, it's not just a commercial neighborhood. Absolutely, Susan. I lived in lower Manhattan for years. And so absolutely in terms of all when, whenever we have a peak type of event, like a special event where there, where there are specific arrivals and departures, those need to be managed and are in our recommendation to have uh, personnel on the street, flagmen, move the cars along, direct them off of the frontages, get the other cars to queue in um, and you know believe those events that are special events would be happening off the traditional AM and PM peak drive times. So that's part of the extension of the building utilization that makes it unique. All right, thank you. Thank you. So everybody, poor Onej has to make sense of this and we have to look at it. But I would like, unless there's anything else I've missed, I'd like to call the question. Second. Seconded. All right, any recusals? Any? Uh, uh, just sticking a pin, sorry for interrupting. This is for all. All of them, we're doing it. Yeah, let's take a mark together. So can't, I can't bear it doing we, it individually. Okay. This is for floors five, six, 10, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Thank you, Onesh. Yes. Um, and Susan, to clarify, yes. it's gonna be noted that these events are gonna be at night or in off hours, the ones on John Street, because a lot's changed on John, John Street um, within the past year or two. Well, it's not just if somebody has a gallery opening at three o'clock in the afternoon, Mariana, right. they have a three o'clock opening on, uh, 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 and what they are saying to us is they will be responsible if they're traffic, that they will control it. But I can't control the times they may have an event. They may have okay. a breakfast meeting, but they are the, what we can have the, what they have assured us and which will go in our resolution is that when they have these large events, uh, which we know over 75 or whatever, and they're going to have drop offs, they're going to control the traffic. And we don't have to, the time. They're not going to be there past uh, 1 o'clock. Right, but no, um, Francis, you're on transportation, right? You attend transportation. No, well, that's, that's for example, one of the things that has changed within the past year on John mm -hmm. Street is transportation and land use um, came to an agreement to put up signs from the DOT allowing traffic certain hours to back up onto Gold Street and even from Cliff from John because the, of a, um, uh, I, don't want, I don't want to use the wrong name, but it's a school with disabled children that the tightest, the tightest access, school. Yes. The yeah. type of school exactly. Um, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of problems on John Street that are that are new yes. that they yes. may not be familiar with. That yes. this may be a problem if they do stuff during the daytime. Uh, not only that, but wait till they start construction on that building there. Right. There's also there's also already construction on John Street and constantly only, um, it's, it's, uh, as Max and all and Ian know, it's going to be their problem. They're going to have to figure it out. I'm going to we're going to give them what we're going to give them, Mariama, and we're going to put in caveats in the resolution. But uh -huh. it's they're going to have to figure it out in some way in terms of 
their business and what they want to have happen. You know, with okay. The okay. All right. So Do we also we need to note in the resolution. Sorry, that uh, basically this is this this is a twenty four hour operation, right? Well, it's a 24 hour operation as a building. It's right. Not That's what I mean, because they may have, they may have, li- but it's not as a liquor license, Francis. Okay. It's but in terms, of license, has- in terms of, I was just speaking and thinking in terms of the traffic and, and, the, and, you know, the traffic. Yeah, but that's, that's okay. not, out of, okay. that's okay. not okay. in our purview in reality, guys. Okay. But. Like, all right, but I think we can note it, Francis. I, uh, I, I let's figure out how. Um, all right, so I had nays. Anybody? I had recusals. I had abstentions. Well, guys, you got it, but you better behave. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much to the to everyone. Really, really this is round one. We understand we're going to have more. So and let's you better be nice make that each other. space down yeah, below. Let's, let's make this good. Really good. <laughs> we know we have to be good because we'll be back for more. And, yeah. you know, and they're, they're going to continue to, you know, be good neighbors. All right. Well, they got you, Max, and we have Onej. So we're That's good. <laughs> Thank you, Onej. <laughs> Thank you, CB1 and Onej. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Bye, bye, man. Bye, Good evening. I have to, we have to get through. Let's get going. <sighs> Martin, do you, is your principal here? What are we doing now? Yeah, as uh, uh, I, I, he's, he's there. Murray, that I made them come in because they wanted to go along. They wanted us, they, they had a, a resolution of, oh. Okay. In, in May 2019, but I wanted to know why the hell it didn't open in four years. Well, can what? I, no, I, and, and what were they doing? Because they obviously they were operating within certain parameters. What were the parameters they were operating in? Your Francis. May, may I may I may I address all of that? Uh, okay. Go on. Uh, Damien O'Brien is also. Uh, I don't know if he's unmuted, but he's he's the owner as well. What happened was something called COVID. They right. they were approved, and then because of COVID, there was no need to file with the liquor authority because they weren't going to use the hours because there wasn't any business. Uh, COVID, while not gone, um, has in a sense allowed them to come back. All we're asking for is the same resolution that was passed by the board back on May twenty eighth, two thousand nineteen. Uh, the hours that that are contained within that. Um, uh, resolution are all that we want. We don't want anything more, and and that's all we're asking. And the reason we had to come back was because, in a sense, this is stale now. The New York Liquor Authority would not accept the 2019 resolution uh, because they they want to know that Community Board Number One still would allow it, and that's why we're here. What were you, I mean, you were obviously open, even though you're saying there was COVID, you were open because you, you even indicate that you, you take, you took advantage of the DOT, um, sidewalk stuff. So what, 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 I mean, you. Yeah, we we was, were open. Why, why, I, maybe Damien can answer better than I can, but what I'm saying is the fact that we were open, we couldn't open at later hours because it wasn't, um, financially viable to open during those hours. So but what now, were you doing? You had uh, we weren't open. We weren't open at the later hours. We adhered to the earlier hours that was stipulated early? to by by community board number one. Well, wait, but that's, wait. But that's a, <clears throat> go on, Francis. But that's the same thing that you're already asking. I'm I'm confused. I don't understand because you you, you, you know, the hours that you gave that uh, are in this uh, this uh, resolution uh, in the beginning were less. Than what we requested in 2019. We don't see anything that says that. Oh, uh, so. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I understand. We're still giving you the same hours. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 If you if you um, vote to um, just agree to what you agreed to in 2019, we can go home. That's what we're asking for. But if that, w- let's make sure 12 a.m. Can Sunday. I just interject? On, explain to the committee. So, what happened was they came into 
I work, they came in front of the committee in May of 2019 to change their hours. They were given those hours. However, they never filed those, those changes with the SLA. Time has run now run out to get those changes approved. So now they would like to reinstate the resolution that is on the screen right now because they never implemented it. No, that is understood. But what were they, when they came in, what hours did they have? The hours that, um, Damien, can you, can you answer that? Is Damien on? Damien, raise your hand. You know how to raise your hand so they can put you on? <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay. Oh, he just needs okay. to unmute. Hello? Yeah. Can everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, the hours that we originally had when we went for our initial license were midnight, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, okay. and 1, 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Gotcha. So the agreement that was made when we applied for a license was come back after one year. Right. If, if you run your business correctly and everybody in the neighborhood gets along, then right. you would give us the extra hour. Which okay. is where we came in May of 2019. But, but, but let, 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 let. <laughs> I'm sorry to stutter. There was no COVID in May 2019. Yes, correct. Okay. So when we left the meeting in May 2019, we were told that Community Board One would send a letter to the SLA and then we would get notified by the SLA to make the changes on our license. So, when the license came to us in 2020, the hours were not changed on the license. I made a phone call to Lucianne, and Lucianne said to me that he would rewrite a letter and send it to the SLA. In the meantime, COVID came, so everything just sat there. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, so, okay. tell me what the hours are. We are so, supposed to so be approved. The hours that we are supposed to be agreeing to, that we agreed on on the 28th of May are midnight on Sunday, 1 a.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and 2 a.m. Friday and Saturday. Can I can I just interject a little bit? It's it's Sunday. It's 10 a.m. to to midnight. Monday it's 11 a.m. to midnight. Tuesday to Thursday it is 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. and 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. On Saturday, uh, uh, on uh, Friday and Saturday. I'm sorry. No, Friday is 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. and Sunday is 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. Just there what it no says. No, 2 a.m. on Sunday. No, it's it's midnight on Sunday, so it's 2 a.m. just on I'm Friday sorry, I'm and sorry. Saturday. As as it is printed on that piece of paper, that is correct. There, I see it. Yes, that's what we all okay. agreed on. That's all. That's all we want. Uh, so I could get this moving along. Does anybody have any trouble? Call the question. Second. Do I have a second? No seconds. All in favor? Uh, wait. No rejection. Sorry. Recusal. Abstention. I'm going to abstain. Oh, God bless you. I would hope you would, Karen. Anybody <laughs> else? Anybody? Uh, uh, um, anybody else? Okay. You got it. Go. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Have a good evening. And I hope my wife is still talking to me. <laughs> she is. Okay. So I have um, uh, the hotel at 86 Warren Street. We have two more items, everybody. Right. 86 Warren Street. Who's here? Give me a second, everybody. Just give me a second. Susan, what about? Susan, yes. what about the renewals that we have some problems with? Uh, what we are doing, I, I said at the beginning, Joel, is we are okay. sending a letter to the SLA and to the applicant that they will have to come in. Do you want to identify who those renewals are that there's a problem? Uh, I have them here. You want me to go on record? Yeah. Okay. Yes. While she's doing can that, wait that. Can we can we wait until we're finished? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't I'll let go on. When we're finished, this. Joel, I'll do those. Before we... Before we uh, uh, terminate, close. Let me just get to these two. Okay, we have Warren Street Hotel. You may unmute. Okay. 
Can you hear? Yes, we can yes, hear we you. Can. Thank you for your patience. My Thank name you is for your patience. <laughs> Thank you for your, your patience. patience. Exactly. Yeah. My name is Paul Underhill. I'm the vice president for Firmdale Hotels in New York City, who operate hotels in the boutique type. They're owned by Tim and Kit Kemp, who do the design, decoration, building, and operation. It's a family business that's been running for the last 25 years. Started in London with eight hotels, and now has two hotels in New York operating, the Crosby and the Whitby Hotel. I've been involved with the operation for the, the whole of the time. With me, if you have any questions, I have Nick Hamdy, who is the general manager of the hotel, has worked for the Firmdale people for 15 years, and Mark Evans, who is a construction developer, who is interfacing with our builder, Pavarini, who are close to finishing this hotel, ready for opening in the early fall. In addition, I have Valerie Corrales here from Brooklyn Law Firm, should there be any questions legally. Uh, it's a fairly simple thing to discuss. I, I want you to know that I'm ready to sign the stipulations. We just have one or two questions as clarifications from the application which we filled out. But it is a very simple operation. It's 69 rooms dealing with the top end of the market coming to New York City. Of those 69 rooms, we estimate there'll be between 100 and 120 people staying in the night. And we have a restaurant of 150 seats which 50% of these will be used by the hotel guests and the balance for local residents to utilize the hotel as they are at the Crosby Hotel on, on Crosby Street now. Uh, uh, so, uh, Anish, let's walk, uh, uh, move on the application a little bit so we can just see. Yeah. Um... I yeah. want to see the hours and the, so it's a, a, a it's a large venue. Yep. Um, and, uh, okay. So, uh, wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to go back to the rooftop for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Guess only on the rooftop. rooftop. Okay. Hi, Susan. Good evening. My name is Nick. I'll be the GM. Y yes, the rooftop. The rooftop terrace will be for hotel guests only. And there will be a bar on the rooftop? No, there will not be a bar on the rooftop. It'll be room service that will service the rooftop terrace. Um, so if a hotel guest checks in and it's nice weather, they can order a club sandwich up on the roof and a glass of wine. What are the hours on the rooftop? Uh, we put in the application 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. For, for serving liquor. Um, and then 11 p.m. everyone off the terrace. And I, I couldn't see it as it went went through. Are, is there any particular form of entertainment on the rooftop? No, no form of entertainment on the rooftop. It really is a sort of sun deck for hotel guests. Well, you've got to, you've got live music checked. So where does That's, that take place? That's correct. So, as in one of our other hotels, the Whitby Hotel, we do plan to have a three piece acoustic jazz band playing um, in the restaurant. Uh, so, not on the roof terrace. And the restaurant is directly adjacent to the terrace? The, uh, the restaurant is on the first floor at street level. I see. And do you have doors or windows on the first floor through which the music or other noise can filter out? So we have two now main go doors. Go back to delivery. Oh. I know. Oh, no. Yeah, this is a problem. Um, Karen, Karen, did you want me to answer the question on the doors? Yes. 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 So, so we have no French windows. We have no windows to open on the first floor. We have two main doors, uh, which will be the entrance to the hotel. And there is one door, which is the entrance to the restaurant. If you scroll through to the plans, you'll be able to see the main entrance to the restaurant is actually through the hotel lobby. And you'll see that's where the host desk is. And it's right next to where the coat check will be. Um, we, we don't envisage using that, that door to, that goes direct into the restaurant. 
from the oh, street. So right. that's your rest. Is, go back, Onesh. I want to make sure I've seen the building because I've seen it uh, going. Yeah. I've walked by it numbers of times. I want to make sure I. Yep, that's it. Yes. Right? yes. That's the one, Susan. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh. Oh, we say. Uh, <laughs> right down from Gee Whiz. Okay, I know exactly. Oh, Gee Whiz, yeah. It's yeah, very nice. Okay, are there uh, the hours seem fine to me? Are there any other questions? Deliveries. It's it, it's, it's there. It's there. Yeah, it it anticipates deliveries at six a.m. <laughs> it's a bit early. Uh, it it is early, but we do serve breakfast. Um and um. Most of our most of our food and food deliveries will be between six a.m. and eleven a.m. Um, we do have guests sleeping in the hotel from the second floor up, and so we are extremely conscious of noise, uh, just as we are for for, for our neighbours um, all, all around us on Warren Street. Where is your loading dock? So if you go back to the front of the hotel, the service entrance is to the right of the building. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I see it, but this is a real problem. Not only are people sleeping upstairs, but they're sleeping across the street and on either side of you. Yeah. So I, I think you should make this later. What time do you begin serving breakfast? 7 a.m. They can't make it any later. Can it's a problem. They make it it. I, I think you just listen. I understand it's a, you know, you have people in the hotel. You have to be aware of your neighbors. We will make a little note to that. Uh, we'll give you six. I, I can't see you take it away from you, but uh, you've got to be really conscious. You, you are on a residential job as well. Of course, Susan, we, we totally understand. And I, I really want to be a good neighbor to to, to all of our neighbors on board. Yeah, there'll be a lot of activity in there because the Whole Foods is right there and the school is right there. Yeah, can I make a, a suggestion? That if the vehicles that deliver the breakfast or whatever food um, are electric vehicles instead of gas powered, they will be much quieter. They, uh, they, uh, they, they, you can make that suggestion. Um, that's it. They can that's it. That's ridiculous. Uh, uh, that's but I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think we're going to give it to you. I mean, unless somebody votes against it, but you just have to be aware. All right, so are there any other questions? All right, could I, uh, I'm going to call the question. question. Okay, thank you. Could I have a second? Second. All right, any recusals? Any um, rejections? Any nays? Any abstentions? Yeah, I'm going to abstain from this one also. You're, uh, Karen, that's you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, everybody else, um, I'm going to. Good luck to you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank we look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Yes, I'll stop by. Yeah. I'll buy, a, buy my own drink. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, okay. All right. Last one is uh, 266 Canal Street. And we should just let this person go because this, yes. this, this is- I totally agree. It's this a is very one of these, one. There's nothing, this is a perfect uh, application. <laughs> yes. And it's it's been in existence for years. Right. For so years. Can I, can I call the question? The call the question. Second. Second. Uh, any abstentions? Recusals, M Mr. Tang, are you here? Maybe not. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We'll let it go. Yeah, uh, uh, everybody else. Okay. And so before yeah. we end this meeting, I That's want good. for the record for everybody to know that um, we are not going to, uh, uh, we have some troubles with the um, uh, renewals of 33 Vesey, 195 Broadway, 70 Pine, 80 Beekman, 95 South Street, and 89, 89 South Street, and 
20 Warren Street. We are going to send all of them a letter at, with a CC to the SLA explaining that they will have to come back in March for review. Susan, I have a, que Susan, I have a question. Yes. Um, you asked Lucian, I think at the last meeting, was there an update on 20 Exchange as to where they are as far uh, as Joe, opening? somehow I knew you were going to ask that. And I asked him this afternoon and he hadn't heard back and he's moving on it because I've seen activity in and out of there and I had the same question. So hopefully by the next meeting or before we will have an answer. Hopefully it's before because there's a lot of work to be done there. I know, I know. They're supposed to, I told Lucian to go to the uh, stipulation, get the people there are supposed to inform us. That is what the rule was. So I want to thank you all for coming and staying and hanging in there. I am most appreciative. Francis and I both are. Thank yes, you. Yes, we are. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, and I'm ready for next month to come as close to six as possible. Yes. And and the meeting date has changed for next next month. Next month it's okay. going to be on March 14th. The date has been changed and Thanks. we'd like everybody to come on Please time. Know. It's going yeah. to be a long it is going to be another long agenda. So please okay. be on time. Thank you. Uh, March 14th is the second uh, second, uh, is that uh, that's going to conflict with you and Ed, which I'm a member as well. We've changed it. Ed has been moved. That's also been moved. Okay. 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 Thanks. Uh, same time. Uh, same uh, time same or time, different time? Same, same, yeah, no, same time. time, just different day. Just a Got different it. day because Susan and Francis, we're not going to be around on the. We're not going to be okay. around. Okay. We're going to air our heads out <laughs> so we can come back and be civil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Good night.